powered from the Perdomo Cigars Studios Black Stage in Indian Trail, North Carolina, and broadcasting from California. It's episode 145 of the Primetime Show. And tonight, we welcome back Rafael Nodell of Tlapcarara, USA, and Boutique Blend Cigars for an evening of cigar talk. And, as always, the Primetime Show is sponsored by... Saga Cigars. De Los Reyes Cigars introduces another chat for the saga, the Saga Celez. Celez is a Spanish word that means leisure after work. In the spirit of the standing ideal of owning your own journey and making your own saga, the Saga Celez is a perfect companion to enrich those moments of choice, making them truly yours. The Saga Celez carries a blend of Criollo Olor and Piloto Cubano wrapped in a selected Ecuador shade Claro that generously delivers with elegance a surprisingly rich and balanced smoke. It's available in three sizes at an affordable price. Ask for your retailer for Saga Celez. And by Perdomo Cigars. Awarded Nicaraguan Cigar of the Year in 2014 by Cigar Journal, the Perdomo 20th anniversary brand has consistently earned the highest scores in the industry and is a top seller in humidors around the world. The Perdomo 20th anniversary blend requires tobaccos that have been carefully hand-selected and are well-aged for a minimum of eight years. The Perdomo 20th anniversary is offered in three distinct wrappers, a smooth, creamy Ecuadorian Connecticut, a rich, earthy Cuban seed Nicaraguan sun-grown, and a dark, oily Cuban seed Nicaraguan Maduro. Combining these beautifully bourbon barrel-aged wrappers with thick, high-priming binder and filler tobaccos gives each blend a balanced complexity with layers of rich flavors and smooth, elegant aromas. Perdomo Cigars, a family-owned and operated company headquartered in Miami, Florida, with manufacturing and agricultural facilities in Esteli, Nicaragua. Perdomo's highly acclaimed cigar brands include the Perdomo Estate Selection Vintage, the Perdomo Double Age 12 Year Vintage, the Perdomo 20th Anniversary, the Perdomo Reserve 10th Anniversary Champagne, Perdomo Abano Bourbon Barrel Age, Perdomo Lot 23, and many more. For great tasting notes and pairing information, check out the new Perdomo website at www.perdomocigars.com. And by Miami Cigars. Nesta Miranda said it best. There is a mystery and depth to Africa that captivates my spirit, always drawing me back. This cigar, Don Lino Africa, captures the way going there makes me feel. Cigar making is an art form, but in the moment when the cigar becomes art itself, you have something special. Don Lino Africa returns from Miami Cigar and Company. The blend you remember blended even more masterfully this time in partnership with Tabacalera AJ Fernandez. An exotic and complex blend meant to mesmerize. It's available in five box plus batolas. Don Lino Africa returns. Ask for it at your local retailer. And finally, by Drew Estate. Check out and download the Drew Diplomat app for your mobile device. Keep up with everything going on Drew Estate. Experience the subculture that is the rebirth of cigars. It's available on iTunes or Google Play. For more information, check out www.drewdiplomat.com. And as always, all the live streaming of the primetime shows is sponsored exclusively by Drew Estate. Well, welcome, everybody. This is Primetime Episode 145 for this Thursday, July 2nd, 2020. This is Will Cooper. I'm in the Perdomo Cigar Studios on the Black Stage, and I'm joined all the way across country in California by my friend and colleague, Mr. Aaron Loomis. How are you doing tonight, Will? I'm doing great. How about you? Doing fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, been, a, it's, uh, like I said, it's, uh, it's been a little bit of, I'm in vacation mode technically already. Yep. Um, at least day job vacation mode. Um, right. So I'm kind of happy right now. Um, and, uh, you know, so um, I'm kind of, it's a staycation, obviously. Yep. But, you know, I was kind of a little bummed because, you know, um, one year ago was like we were just getting out of the trade show. I was yep, like, exactly. you know, so uh, it's, it's, there's definitely a void, I think, for sure. We're not, we're not all together this year, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been, uh, Man, it's been a bunch of years since we've been together at the same time every year, and it's just like this. Now you have to miss it. So yeah, definitely, yeah. A, you feel like there's like a little. It's a odd space. Yeah, I know we were. To- Remember, I think we were toying at one point with the idea of going to Vegas anyway, right? Yeah. Before yeah. Vegas closed down, I think we were saying, "Well, let's just go to Vegas anyway." Well, if there's no show, right? Yeah. But then Vegas closed down, and um, it uh, wasn't going to really work out at that point. Yeah, it's just too risky. I think it's not worth worth trying to do that. Well, you know, yeah, we could, we could wait another year or nine months or whatever we want to do to. Yeah, to I mean, I guess uh, hopefully January comes back around again uh, is the question. Yeah. Um, and whether we where we stay or we whether we media compound, I think we'll we'll, we'll know that in the upcoming weeks. I guess yep. is what's yep. going to happen with that. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a. Uh, I said it was definitely like I said. Uh, I was kind of a little bummed all week, but I the. Watching the going through the pictures and everything was was kind of cool. So yeah. uh, I had that bare sentimental moment though a few <laughs> times this week. 
<laughs> so uh no but uh but at least everyone's healthy and safe here yeah yep. all right um so without further ado let's welcome in our special guest uh he is the director of product capability for tobacco era usa and he's the owner of boutique blend cigars he's the one and only rafael nodal rafael yeah. welcome back to prime time well thank you very much and aaron how you guys doing and uh, thank you thank you for having me here fantastic evening um close to the holidays, starting the, the, the weekend for 4th of July, fantastic weekend. Uh, and uh, you're on vacation. I've been watching some of your pictures. Uh, <laughs> and um, uh, it's, it's great. It's great to relax. But you're right. This is a time that we would have been together. Uh, you know, everybody gets together and, and, and gets to see. And, and I also like to say uh, uh, welcome is, is watching, obviously, some of our friends. Alan Rubin is over here. Uh, and, and it's not every day that you get you, one of your attorneys, the FDA attorney, uh, of watching the show. So Beth Oliva is in the house. Thank you, Beth, all the way from New Jersey. Beth, you're doing some fantastic cooking during this, uh, during this time. And uh, it's uh, very inspiring. Guys, I've been cooking a lot during this time. Uh, I'm not sure that I gained some weight or not. Uh, well, <laughs> I am sure I am, but uh, I haven't. I haven't uh, uh, weighed myself, but uh, I have to tell you, I uh, I really enjoyed you know uh, cooking during this time and uh, really trying different things that I never uh, tried before. So it really been a fun time. I mean, I always believe in making the best out of it. So uh, this is it. Uh, we uh, we have to make the best out of it. Oh, exactly, Raphael. Uh, I I totally agree with that. I've been following those uh following your journey with that as well. Um, and uh, you know, I know you know food. I mean, we had that great steak dinner at TPE. Uh, that's right. That's right. And I know you go. And by the way, I I look at the pictures the other day, and you are absolutely correct. Looking at the pictures, it's like uh, it's like uh, re reliving those moments. So I I look at some picture of all sitting in that fantastic restaurant there with some nice steak. Some great ham, some some fantastic wine, your blue shirt, things like that. Oh, the blue Again, shirt that I got, the yeah, stickers yeah, on, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it, isn't it fun to look at back at, at, and really re relieve those moments? Is yeah. uh, I really do that a lot. I don't know about you guys. I don't know, Aaron. Do you uh, do you do and the same thing? Will uh, I look at the pictures back many years yep. and, and, and you know really like being there again, right? Yep, exactly. Yeah. It really was, you, you know, and, and Raphael, it's kind of ironic. One of the viewers who's in the room is a guy by the name of Scott Cunius. Uh, he used to work over at the Outland Cigars. He's the one who first introduced me to King Habano. No kidding. Yeah, so he, he, he worked there. He managed the store, and I remember he handed me one of the little short ones, uh, the gesture, the gesture the size. Yester, the gesture. It was like a knob type. Yeah, of. it was like a knob, and uh, it was Scott who introduced me to your brand. Uh, that, so I, I remember – I went in there, and I remember distinctly, I went in there on a weekday night. Um, I'd been somewhere for my day job. It was like 8 o'clock, and I walked in. He said, you got to try this cigar. And, um, um, yeah, it's, Scott's in the room tonight. So, again, just kind of reminiscing about that. That's going back to 2008, I believe, we're looking at. Yeah, yeah, it was. It, yes, and you know what? Uh, last year, one of my tours, and I, I, I'm not sure what story it was, but I do believe he was in California in the Oakland area. I don't remember the actual name of the store right now, but I was one store uh, visiting and uh, the owner told me, listen, um, I, I look, uh, I found this box a few days ago and I wanted you to show it to you. And it was uh, one of the black nights uh, of the- of the, Oh, the box the, press. The Havana box press. Yeah. And uh, so I offered to purchase it. It didn't allow me to purchase. <laughs> it did open and give me two cigars. And uh, I have to tell you, you know, it's great tobacco uh, aged fantastically, right? So aged, uh, good tobacco gets better with time. But um, yeah, so as I look back in the journey, right, of how how long has it taken and, and, and throughout the metaphors is that I, you know, things that have changed uh, with the Oliveros, with the flavors, the Oliveros, the King Habano, the, the I even had one before that, Habana Cuba Premier Selection. And uh, so, you know, so we... Um, it's, it's, it's fun to look back at, uh, at, at the journey and it's been long, it's been difficult sometimes, but around, you know, but along the way, I met so, so many great people that I stayed there for, uh, you know, uh, friends for a long time. And remember you meeting you in, uh, in Tom's uh, yep. um, store 
uh, when I was visiting, I did an event there at the private club with or the club on the side with, uh, with the Scott Wicks. And I remember that date. And uh, I had the Oliveros Excels and all these things. Um, it was, do you remember what year was that? It was, I think it was 2009 because okay. I had moved to Charlotte in 08. That's when Scott introduced me to the brand. And I think you came in around Valentine's Day in 2009 because I remember that I was at that event before Valentine's Day. Well, you always remember those events. I can tell you, I remember those days in Valentine's because my wife always remind me that, yeah. hey, you're not here another year. But <laughs> yeah, it's been a long journey, uh, uh, but one that I really enjoy. I met so many, you know, you you were work. you, you know, you are in the Perdomo, uh, in Perdomo Studios, Black Studio today, and you talk a little bit before about the different ones, but he's introducing this new one, the 10th anniversary, um, Perdomo, who has the look of La Tradicion, right? The Perdomo, yeah. uh, La Tradicion, which he did, re, I think it's 2016, he relaunched that. And what an amazing uh, cigar. I remember that was the first cigar that I had, and that's why I got into the cigar industry. Uh, so, you know, I always look forward to everything that Perdomo, that Perdomo does. As a matter of fact, I tried to buy it, and I haven't been able to get my hands on one yet, the Perdomo fry, uh, Firecracker. Um, mm. And uh, I did, you know, hopefully, you know, I have some friends that perhaps <laughs> uh, can, can send me some. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I always look forward to those things. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, Nick handed us some of those, uh, that Maduro and that Sun Grown when I was on the factory tour um, in February. And uh, they were really good, um, what, what he had given us, both the Sun Grown and the Maduro. Um, so they were, they were, I think people are going to be really happy with those. I, I, I was very impressed with those cigars. Um, oh, Bill and Aaron, thank you for having me back. But I have to tell you, I feel like part of the family because I watch your show. I, well, you guys know, because yes. I always put some comments and things like that. And, uh, someone the other day, a good friend that also looked at the show, watched the show. And he said, do you have no life? And you go to any show. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, I practically have no life. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, Rafi, I just want to uh, also mention thank you as well for the support of the show as well, because we're going to be uh, we're doing a series of giveaways. We normally do them on Tuesdays, but since you're on the show, uh, we're going to give away this uh, travel humidor and uh, torch lighter branded with Romeo y Julieta. Um, so when we start talking about Romeo y Julieta, I'll put a question out there and folks can enter to win. Five, at six, these are valued at 60 bucks. These are a really nice set here. Um, we've got a nice audience response on the Tuesday show, but, um, and, uh, Rafael, the other ironic thing I just want to, and I kind of bears the guy who's really into the numbers on our show, but it's the 145th anniversary of Romeo Julieta at 145th show. That was just totally coincidence, actually. It's so. Unbelievable. When you were looking at the number, when you were saying the number for 145th episode, and mm -hmm. I, I, I thought of that because we thought of doing a, a 145th anniversary and things like that. And at the end, we decided not to. We do, we are launching uh, another fantastic Romeo and Juliet uh, later on, uh, not too far from now. Uh, but uh, it's uh, we we decided not to do the the anniversary part. But yeah, yeah, what a coincidence! And 145. Yeah. By the way, congratulations! 145 of anything, right? Of <laughs> anything, it's a lot. And and I know that the work that goes into, as you know. We did, you know, we did some live in our some of our channels that we have in a, in a, um, 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 in the social media in, in Facebook at the Cigar Life and some in in, in our other channels. Uh, and let me tell you, what a hard job! I have so much respect <laughs> for you guys, and to do this every week, and you know, it's uh, I don't know how you do it, guys. It's it's a lot of work. Uh, we, it's, it's fun. So we it's like fun. to do it. Yeah, it's fun. Um, you know, it's, it's, I think it's a little different for us because this is, in, in terms of our involvement in the cigar industry, this is kind of like the primary thing we do. You guys have so many other responsibilities um, that, that I think, you know, you, you did a very good job. I, I watched the marathon. Sh I was on one of your shows, and, and then I watched that marathon show you did. Um, and uh, I thought you were going to go for, like, the record, the 24-hour record. <laughs> I, you know, we, we, I know you did something very, very long as well. The, and, um, and we said, you know, I'm, I'm a very, um, I, 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 I'm a very competitive person. And I said, you know, oh my God, a marathon, someone did it long, how many hours? <laughs> and I said like, 
wide. There's no way. And, uh, and, and let me tell you, I have so much respect because you know that everything can go wrong, normally goes wrong, especially with the guests and the sound. So you get some people with, you know, hey, hey, buddy. you turn yeah. this and in, in our case, we did it, uh, we did, we prepare and all this, you know, but we did it from, from the time we thought of an idea to the time we came, uh, we, we executed, it was a week, seven days. And in that time, we got the, everybody together and this and that. And uh, let me tell you, it's a lot of work. And uh, and um, it's, uh, I have a tremendous respect. And, you know, we just did it during this time. Uh, we wanted to communicate with the, with the consumers on the, this very difficult time. Uh, but uh, we, we did not continue doing it because I want to leave that for the professional, right? So it is, I see some people that are still doing it and they continue doing it. And let me just tell you that you guys are professional and we are professional at something else and making cigars and selling cigars. And that's it. That's our job. This is your job. And, uh, and, and uh, let me tell you, we work hard. Our job is, is hard and, and, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not easy, but we enjoy it. But when I did, Something that you guys don't. I say, wow! How can these people do it every week? Like, you know, it's, it's crazy. Oh, uh, it, it, it's it, you get used to it. <laughs> but uh, like I said, this is yeah. It it um, you, you did very good, Raphael. The the production was very good. I enjoyed when we had that show, and uh, I think you did very well. So, uh, I I give you very high marks on that. No, but I, I have I a lot of experience it. because I watch you all of you uh, uh, shows or most of it, not all, but most of it, which I enjoy. And because it, it truly, you get a lot of information. So just recently, we you have Perdomo, which I enjoy all the questions. And then you have, uh, last week, I believe, Ernesto Perez Caprillo, which is one of my idols and a good friend. And, you know, so when you get someone in, in this situation at night, talking, relaxing, or, or when you had Lito Gomez, that was an amazing show, uh, especially because Lito doesn't do a lot of these things, right? Uh, I remember yeah. when I used to have a store in Miami Lakes and uh, Lito Gomez came and did an event. It was many, many years ago and Lito didn't do this type of events because Lito is a very private person. Yeah. And, uh, uh, it, you know, you learn so much from these people. I love what you guys do and the, and the questions and the things. And, uh, and for the Nesto Perez Carrillo show that you did, you guys, you guys did, you knew everything. I think he mentioned and Nesto mentioned, hey, uh, you know more than I do because you know, <laughs> we tend to, to, to forget some of these things, right? And um, it, it was fun. I, I enjoy listening to you guys because it's it's really not not only entertainment, which I value these days a lot more than perhaps uh, before, but um, education, right? Education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's if you know, this is how I take it: is I do the shows, I learn something from doing the shows. Mm -hmm. um if i'm helping someone learn something along the way that's fine but i've learned a lot uh that's for sure um just all around uh and you oh do, yeah the best you have david garafalo for for god's sake you have dave that i listen to dave every week and then you you know you put him in the other side and you ask him the questions and the books and the things so it is uh it, it i mean for me it's uh it's a fantastic time i tell you i tell all our employees that you want to learn about cigars tuning to take your time to tune in cigar coop and, and and you can learn uh not only about cigar which is is, is very important but uh, it also learn about our industry and our lifestyle right it is uh, it is very different absolutely absolutely um yo Raphael, since we had you on the show last time uh there's been a few things that have happened i think that are very noteworthy Let, let's kind of kick it off you, you um uh, since you were on the show Last, um, you, you've uh, taken home a big prize, a number one cigar of the year from Cigar Aficionado. Um, so congratulations on that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Will, for really believing on this, right? Because I remember that day, you know, uh, I remember you having a show that day. You did a live show that day and you said, or the day before or something. The day before. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, uh, there's no way. I mean, you know, forget it. This is out. This is out. And man, he hurt me. He hurt me. It's like, oh, my God. Uh, but by the way, so did many 
uh, close friends of mine. Eh? Uh, so, uh, but hey, that's uh, that's life. But uh, you know, I uh, yeah, that, thank you, thank you. That's uh, uh, certainly a great, a great uh, accomplishment. Not only for me and the face and the one that goes and talk, but it's a team that goes uh, behind this, right? And, and we do it in Tabacalera and our our boutique blend the team as well. The Hank uh, is an amazing part of this. Uh, um, uh, also, uh, uh, everybody, but Altadis USA uh, and, and Tabacalera has been an amazing support and team. And by the way, Hoshi Blanco, our, our, my, my partner Hoshi, which uh, um, none of these could have started, right, without, without him. So I do appreciate every single person that from the beginning, he believed in me. No, oh, I know. Uh, yeah, I know. I remember when you started working with Hochi uh, on the first aging room. Um, and, you know, that really kind of was what made people take notice of you. Right, right. Because, you know, <laughs> you know, I was in the cigar. We, you know, I love the cigar. I really did it wrong, but business-wise, the, the cigar, right? And uh, because I went with idea is uh, this is very easy to do it. I saw how other people did it. And I, you know, you guys from the outside make it look so good and so easy, right? Yeah. This, is, yeah. this is very easy. I have met Nick. That's how I got into the cigar industry. I yeah. Hank told it took me to Little Havana. I got my I bought my first cigar. I bought my first box of cigar. I smoked my first cigar with Nick, with Al, with his brother-in-law, with Michael. I met uh, 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 the whole family. I met it that day, but uh, that day. Um, I smoked my first cigars. I went that evening to my house and I told my wife, I am going into the cigar business. That's <laughs> how it comes because Nick is, has such a, um, by the way, he has mellow out right now a little bit, eh? but uh, Nick <laughs> has such a, it's a, 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 such an enthusiasm, right? For, for what he does. And it was contagious. It's like a virus. I went that evening and said, that's it. That's that's what I know I'm going to do the rest of my life. I didn't say I'm going to do it and see if it works. I said, <laughs> I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. In one day that I yeah. met this guy, right? It's unbelievable. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's really good. Uh, you know, by the way, Alan Rubin uh, also, he, I should say this. Um, yes, he did predict you were going to get number one cigar. Uh, oh, I, I, well, Alan, he did, he did, and he really did predict that even when I, and it was on the show that night, I said, this, it's not happening because the H Upman got number 10. Uh, so Alan, Alan did, he did say that. I got to say that. And I told him he was wrong too. And usually Alan finds a way to be right more than me. So oh, thank you. Thank you. And by <laughs> yeah. the way, it's Scott Alexander that is watching. I said about my story for coming to, uh, coming to America. Uh, one of the things that I, I really enjoyed when you told me the day, right, July 2nd, and I know it was right before the weekend, uh, July 3rd and 4th, and uh, I, I celebrate a few, few days that are very important to me. And one is uh, when I arrived, you know, to this country, May 31st, so that's my 40 years, this last May 31st. And, uh, and then 4th of July for me is an amazing, right? What an amazing occasion. We are going now through difficult times in this country, but I'm uh, amazingly optimistic because the America, I, I, I believe in the American dream. I believe in the American experiment and American uh, is, is what a country, not perfect. And uh, we see that every day, but I can tell you there is the best, there is the best that it can be anywhere else. And so when you told me about July 2nd, right before the celebration, because for me, this year we will not be able to do it because of, uh, of this virus thing, but I throw, I throw such a great parties on July 4th. It's for me, I get all my friends, my family. For me, it's like a, like a Christmas, like New Year's. Uh, uh, it's an important day. So thank you for having me here. It's basically, you are in a vacation, Will. You say you are in vacation mood. I am really in the 4th of July mood. Eh? <laughs> Raphael, I, guess, I know we were talking about this when I did your show. Is it true you were in the dentist chair and missed the call from aficionado that you got the cigar of the year? No, I was not at the dentist. Uh, uh, I, did, I was not at the dentist. I was in the surgeon. Oh, that's right. Yes, oh. yeah, that's right. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. I had, which I'll see him tomorrow uh, because he happens to be a friend. He happens to be the brother. <laughs> Uh, of uh, Nestor Plasencia, an amazing right. cigar, cigar uh, guy, and uh, 
uh, he, I just had a few days before, I had a, um, um, a, a, a hernia operation and I went that day, I was scheduled to have a follow-up. And um, I am, um, you know, I am, you know, I was so nervous and I said, you know what, I'll, I'll continue to do my daily routine of what I expected. I'm not sure that it was going to win. It's very difficult. I got the number 10. That was amazing. We got the number 10. It was the first one they gave. It's an A Shortman um, uh, 175th anniversary. And then I said, wow, so fantastic, very happy. And then I said, wow, that, then it's difficult, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know you, so, but yeah, so I was in the, in the, I was in the surgeon that day. And uh, when the secretary, his secretary came to, to the office, inside to the room, uh, he was actually shaking me at the moment. Eh? At the moment, he was, uh, yeah, yeah, he was holding my thing. And, uh, and the secretary said, excuse me, Dr. Rafael has been getting so many calls. And your brother's on the line. And Carlos Padron, one that worked with him for a long time, um, his attorney um, and business partner, hey, he's on the phone. I said, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm. So he was telling me this while I, you know, have my, it's very, you know, oh. amazing. Right. Oh, that's a good story, though. Good story. The other thing, Raphael, that, that has happened is I guess it's a pretty significant thing uh, maybe um, that a lot of folks will want to know, um, or actually do know, is that um, Imperial, the parent company, uh, completed the sale of uh, the premium cigar division. So how is that – what's the state of things right now in the company um, now that that transaction has been completed and – What's going on in terms of internally now? You could scale Yeah, well, it. Imperial announced the sale. Eh? Announced the sale. The right. sale will happen now. The, the final part will right. happen. Uh, but, um, you know, it's a, we are extremely excited, uh, excited about this. So the way it works, uh, the, the, the company, as you know, the United States, the Bacaleta USA, uh, that, in, that includes uh, um, the three big pillars that we have, the JR Cigars, uh, uh, with, uh, Alta the JR also has uh, um, Santa Clara, where where our friend Alan is is uh, works, and um, then you have um, uh, Alta this USA, and you have Casa de Monte Cristo, and so all of that is a United States operation of Tabacalera USA, and we're part of Tabacalera in the in 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 um, in Europe, and Tabacalera the whole thing was sold. And um, we are extremely excited because uh, Imperial, which is a fantastic company, and it's, but it's a cigarette company and it's a mass market company. And, uh, um, and they wanted, uh, although the, the, the premium cigar has been performing fantastically, you know, keep in mind when they bought the company many years ago, it included many other brands like Bacchus, like uh, Have a Tampa, like some of these uh, other fantastic uh, mass market brands. That were Philips and many others. Uh, they were separated, and that went to the to the uh, mass market division. So we have been concentrated, <coughs> excuse me, in the in the uh, premium division. So as a premium division, we are extremely happy to be now independent of that because uh, our goal is to make the best cigar we can, right? Uh, and dedication uh, to to premium cigars, and that's. Uh, uh, and now we have Tabacalera de Garcia, which the sale will completely, according to what they said, uh, um, uh, it became public. It will be completely uh, later on. And we have Tabacalera Flor de Copan, an amazing factory celebrating 44 years in, the, in Honduras. So that, that is all part now of the same family. And we're extremely, extremely happy because uh, um, uh, we just have amazing brands, right? When you mentioned Romeo and Juliet, 145th anniversary, you, you know, a Shortman, 176th anniversary, um, the, the Monte Cristo from, from uh, 1935. And uh, it's just amazing brands, amazing, iconic brands. Very, very true. In terms of like, you mentioned um, Tobacco Lera in Europe, they have Vega Fina. Is there any, I, I know there's, there's been some Vega Finas we've had over here. Is that is anything, would anything change with that given the way right. that the split happened or no? You know, um, no, we, we are we are continuing with Vega Fina, which is our global brand, right? Besides right. Yeah. Cuban cigar. And I'm going to take this opportunity to give a little heads up. Uh, and this is news. We have not disclosed this, and this was going to be said later on. 
uh, maybe a month or for now or something was going to become public. But I owe you guys a lot and I'm, you invited me for us. You're like, so in your show, I want to say that we are launching very soon within the, actually in the, uh, the, the end of August, beginning of September, we're launching uh, Vega Fina 1998 in United States, which is an amazing brand that celebrates the beginning of Vega Fina. And we are finally launching that in United States. It's going to be now sooner, but because of uh, the show, but because of all the the delays, right, with the show uh, uh, during this time, and then not, us not going to the show, and then this time the COVID-19, the COVID but we're going to be launching that. So our goal uh, in the Vega Fina is now we're going to introduce the 1998, and then we're going to align our strategy, global strategy of Vega Fina. So when you have a release, it's going to be uh, internationally, and it's going to align those two strategies to be a true um, uh, global brand. Nice. That's great news. Uh, you know, it was funny because there were a couple of Vega Fina 1998s floating around Pro Cigar. <laughs> so I'm yeah. Like, yeah. I know because, uh, listen, that's an amazing brand, right? I it is. For the first time uh, last year in April at our Tabacalera Global Meeting, um, in, uh, in in Seville, I mean Seville. Give you uh, Seville. This is where the whole tobacco thing started. The older cigar factory there, uh, which at the time had over ten thousand cigar rollers. So it's, it's, you know, it's amazing. Um, and um, so there we had last year, and I tested it for the first time. It's, it's you know we uh, yeah we we are now that I'm in uh, in marketing with uh, Alta this USA as well. Um, uh, we are dedicated to to really make uh, Vega Fina a global brand, uh, and part of that has to be uh, our dedication in United States to the brand. So we're pretty excited about that. Excellent, excellent news to hear. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, like I said, uh, I you know I've I've had a lot of affinity with the Vega Fina brand. So um, I know you do, and I know. And actually, last year we got uh, we got one of the top twenty five. Uh, uh, the top 25 with the Vega Fina, right? And we mm -hmm. received, uh, you brought it to the show last year. Yep. And we really appreciate it. It's in the office. And uh, yeah, so we're very excited about that. That's a very excited brand. Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed I, Aaron liked that cigar too. The, uh, the, yeah. If Aaron would like a cigar, we always uh, kid him about that. I wish more came to the States. Yeah, that's well, what Well, <laughs> now you will have it. Now make sure you get some, man. Eh? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, it's funny because Aaron and I sometimes are polar opposite on some stuff, but that one we were like all in sync with. Like this yep. is a really good cigar, and yep. uh, it is, yeah. it is. And yeah. listen, Pedro Ventura in Tabacalera de Garcia and the group of the maestros have been doing a fantastic job with that. The truth is that uh, uh, the re origins of Vega Fina at the beginning was very mild, right? Yeah, and uh, we have the white series and all this, uh, but um, uh, through a series of very special. Um, editions or limited editions and the brand has continued to get uh, more complexity on the blends and more more flavorful and uh, it's a cigar that you you mentioned Aaron has certain way of looking at the, uh, the the flavor profile and you have others so I think this is something that actually is incorporates a lot of people's in the in the will in the will uh, of flavor right yeah and you know, Rafael, I have been smoking a lot of the Vega Finas. I reviewed the the year of the rat they did earlier, and and that was a much bolder Vega. I didn't expect that from a Vega Fina. That was a that was a stronger cigar. I was like, I was very very uh, surprised and impressed with that. With Absolutely. That year of the rat. Yeah. And we're gonna continue next year to, like I say, align, and we're gonna be releasing all those uh, all those uh, uh, brands just like we you know doing Europe doing at the same time here. I think it's a great, uh, some of those blends are amazing. And um, we do have, and I, we get a lot of calls in the office of people that travel to Europe and then come back and say, hey, by the way, you know, a retailer call us, hey, someone is here that tried this and this and that there. Do you have it? No, we don't sell it. I mean, it's ridiculous. So we are moving ahead to, uh, to do that. Yeah, I, I found that stock cut in Sweden and I love that, that Vega Fina stock cut. <laughs> Um, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that was, a, that was a really good one as well. Um, you know, again, it was a very uh, busy year for you. Um, and obviously, you know, the decision early on, um, 
of um, Tobacco Rio to say was not going to be at the trade show there. Um, and right. now there's no trade show, obviously, for because of COVID, right? But it obviously had to change your, your go-to-market strategy, what you, what you were doing this year, uh, with, with the fact that you guys were not planning on being at the trade show. Absolutely. Um, so let's go at it from a couple of different angles. How does this? How did this first of all affect how you were going to interface with your retailers, given that you weren't going to have a bunch of retailers now coming to a booth this year at at a at a trade show? So when the decision was made, um, uh, and by the way, not politically, it didn't mean anything um, other than we felt that uh, uh, we, uh, you know, we could reach our, our retailers a different way and um, uh, and save money and pass those savings along to to the retailers and, and hopefully to the consumers on that so we wanted to um, to continue doing that and that's why the decision was made not to go to the show so yes with that in mind we came out with different ideas to um, to reach those retailers and present the new the new releases we are doing. Um, you just received information and, and, and I'm smoking that one uh, of the Henry Clay uh, Warhawk Rebellious is one of the ones that we're doing. We also releasing one next week, another one next week and one the following, I mean, at, uh, another one next month and another one the following month. So, but all of those strategy, how we were gonna do things, it did change because of the COVID-19, right? Right. So, um, so uh, all of the plans that we had for uh, during this year, uh, which by the way, we're celebrating this year the 20th anniversary of Altadis USA, of incorporation of Altadis USA. So, um, so we had a lot of plans prepared for that, but again, it did change, uh, and uh, we're adjusting like everybody else to to the current uh, to the current environment, right? Yeah, there were a lot of anniversaries this year because uh, you mentioned Alta this 20th. Uh, Romeo, we mentioned Romeo and Juliet is uh, 145th. Monte Cristo, 185th. Uh, so this was a big this was a big year, obviously, for milestones with the company. 85, 85 Monte Cristo, yeah, 85. I'm sorry, did I say one of you? I meant 85. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. And 176. And, you know, there's a listen, when you work with such amazing brands, right? So with so many years, every year is a, an amazing anniversary. You, it may sound good or, uh, or, or, on the numbers, uh, 176, it doesn't uh, look as good as 175, but they're amazing anniversaries every year of our brands. And then you had Trinidad 50 years last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's always, uh, you know, you're always bound to have an amazing anniversary uh, with, uh, with all of our brands, right? So, yeah, yeah, it is uh, a, lot of, a, a lot of different things to... Uh, to celebrate but listen we are adjusting we are reaching the retailers we are dedicated uh, to the different uh, platform that we have and our, our extensive uh, sales force of uh, um, uh, the people that visit the stores we are dedicated to to reach the consumers and, and 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 we are changing every year as you know we are evolving and and that is part of the the uh, the journey right so we are uh, that's why i'm here that's why javier estad is my my boss the president of uh a, a tabacalera you say brought me um not only to work on the blends and to work on a, but to work on a vision on his vision of the company which is uh we want it to be large but we want to act like very very small because at the end of the day this is a very dynamic right very dynamic uh um, uh, industry and we value every single one that uh, of our partners and the retailers and consumers and other other manufacturers um, that we work with. Very, very true. Very true. I mean, it was I guess things you mentioned. It was you had a plan to go to market, obviously without the trade show, and then COVID comes in. How have you had to adjust with that now? Because now maybe some of you guys who couldn't be on the road for a while now was suddenly not, not in front of the customers. So how, what was the strategy around that once COVID kind of threw the monkey wrench in there? Yeah, it was, um, it, it was difficult just like for everybody. Eh? This has been a difficult thing. Personally, uh, I've been at home, but, uh, you know, uh, thanks God we have, uh, we have been open during, during, the whole, during this whole thing. Uh, we have continued shipping. We haven't stopped shipping one day um, uh, from our Tampa warehouses since we did. Uh, the same thing with our Santa Clara warehouse. And uh, 
Uh, so the first it was education to our employees, make sure that our employees were safe, and to our retailers, uh, for the communication and making sure have products available uh, for them. Uh, that's a huge thing, right? By the way, right? So when you have a, a you know, the supply chains have changed in the last few years as, as, as needed uh, inventory. But in, in all this, you say we believe in, in, in keeping good inventory uh, for cases like this. Not only of tobacco in the factory, we have a lot. We have one of the largest is tobacco inventory. We have one of the largest. He said we have 7.5 million cigars in, in, in our humidor, 7.5 million. In, in Dominican Republic, Tabaco Legacy, we have over 5 million cigars in our uh, um, humidor in, uh, in the Flor de Copan. We have millions and millions, over 20 million cigars down here in, uh, in our humidors. So we, we believe in making sure that we have everything needed for our retailers and, and for our, um, our consumers. So that, ha that was part of the strategy and that I helped us to continue servicing the consumer, which is at the end of the day, our goal. Very good, very good. Aaron, anything else on that? I know you had some, we put, I, I think I hit some of the points you had put in. Yeah, I think you hit all the notes I, went, I put in there for that. Awesome, awesome. So Rafi, I want to talk a little about Romeo and Julieta, but I think it's a good time to mention the contest right now, uh, what we're gonna do here uh, for the uh, torch lighter and the travel humidor. Um, and of course, this week's contest brought to you by Tobacco Era USA, makers of iconic brands such as Monte Cristo, Romeo and Julieta, H. Upman, Aging Room Cigars, and many more. Tobacco Era USA, great things are happening here. Very simple contest, guys. You have to do this in the, uh, on the Cigar Coop Facebook page. So if you're in a watch party or anything, make sure you're on the main page. Um, tell, tell us the first Romeo and Julieta cigar you smoked. It's very simple. The, the first... Romeo and Julia cigar that they smoke. Very yep. nice. Very yep. nice. Yep. And you need to hashtag it. This is the key part, everyone, because some folks mix this part. So listen carefully. Hashtag it. R-Y-J-1875. Year Romeo and Julia. So, again, it has that hashtag R-Y-J-1875. Otherwise, I can't find it. So R-Y-J-1875, uh, the day that the the year that it's uh, the brand is that very nice. Yeah. Okay. R Y J eighteen seventy five. Yep. I will pick a winner after this uh, show, um, and I'll should have that. But you'll know, have that done probably by the end of the day tomorrow. Uh, and I'll contact the winner, and then uh, I'll connect with Diana, who's been getting those prizes out very quickly. Steve was our big winner last week with the uh, with the aging room uh, cutter and lighter. So uh, we you know we once you get that to me, I get it to Diana, and and you know early next week when everyone's back in the office, we should be able to have that for you. Excellent. And that's a great price because that lighter, which is, uh, you know, actually can serve to cook if you yep. want. It's amazing, you know, uh, I call it a table lighter because yep. I can carry on my, on my packet. So, and it's a fantastic lighter, great torch. And then that pack, that, that uh, cigar humidor case, which is great to carry some cigars, uh, especially in the summer. If you're down here in the South, it's fantastic. Uh, and uh, actually great travel humidor. It holds the cigar very nice. So yeah, we, we, we're we happy. Romeo and Julia, what a brand, right? So I'm smoking the new uh, Romeo. Um, this is a six, uh, six by 60 that was just launched, uh, the Magno, right? Eh? Yep. Uh, I'm not smoking it yet. I will light it up. But uh, this is the Romeo, another launch. Uh, and the Romeo by Romeo and Juliet is a, is a brand that is a mother. It was launched in 2013. And um, it's basically a mother interpretation, a bolder, fuller uh, brand that the traditional Romeo and Juliet. Uh, and it is, um, it is something that we just released. I, I couldn't believe we didn't have a six by six. Yeah. Yeah, very, very true. Um, and that's a this particular brand, the Romeo by Romeo who you had, that's kind of was your gateway into Altidus. That's yeah. right. I listen, I fell in love with this cigar. And you, by the way, I smoke a lot of cigars from a lot of people. Eh? Uh, actually, uh, from time to time, uh, uh, my boss say, who do you work for? You're smoking, you're posting cigars from everybody. And <laughs> I, yeah, but I, you know, listen, I, and, and, you know, so my answer is, yeah, yeah I, I need to test uh, the competition. But it's, it's, it's not really that. Um, I do enjoy cigars uh, from everybody. And, uh, 
and and, and because uh, I'm in this uh, because I love the cigar, right? I love the cigar. So I, it's funny because I was, uh, um, I started buying these cigars and uh, the Romeo and, and I remember in, in an event in Tampa where I asked uh, the rep from Altadis that now is a very good friend and, and I was telling her, hey, can you give me one or two cigars? She said, well, later and this and that. I said, listen, you don't understand. I buy, I have in my car a box or those cigars right now, but I don't want to go all the way to the bar, to the car because it was far. It's in a multi uh, uh, multi vendors. Actually, the Tampa Cigar Bash, a huge event, is now part of Casa de Monte Cristo now. And she said, "Well, I, I'm not sure you you do have a box of cigars." I said, yeah, I went to the car. I got my box of cigars. I want to show it to her that I did both the, buy those cigars. And then I, you know, I I fell in love and I said maybe I can do something with them. And I came with the idea of doing a, a Romeo by aging room. <laughs> like, uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's, well, you know, I, I love to dream, right? I, I dream big. <laughs> and uh, so everybody in my company told me, you're crazy, you know, I'll tell this and that. And I went and I, I pitched the, the idea to them and to my surprise, uh, they say, well, yeah, sounds great. And, uh, uh, and, and they gave me complete control, the complete control of the blend, of the design, of the of the name of the the sizes, uh, uh, which I always in the Asian room I always have musical term right. Yep. So they gave me full control, and I I was surprised. And that cigar did did fantastically. Uh, uh, it was highly rated, and uh, and that's that was the beginning. So it's a cigar that I'm very fond of, that I really love, and uh, we have a lot of plans for it. That's great. That's great to hear. That's great. Like I said, it's become it's that line's been out for about seven, eight years right now. So it's, it's yeah, yeah, 2013 and that that year, seven, yeah, 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 yeah. That year highly, highly rated. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I remember when they were first coming out as well. Um, but you're doing a lot with the. I mean, obviously, 145th anniversary of Romeo and Julieta. Um, and I'm. I'll talk about this cigar in a little towards the end of the se- the segment. Um, the Romeo uh, Julieta 1875 Reserva Real Nicaragua, and um. You bring in your longtime collaboration partner AJ Fernandez for this cigar. Um, yeah. v- a very different interpretation of a Romeo who you edited that you've had before. Um, I love the blue band, by the way. I know people used to say blue bands don't like don't sell, but I can tell you retailers are selling a lot of these right now because yeah. I was they just are, they yeah. are, they are, and yeah. uh, <laughs> and and this has been a success, right? And we prayed and we hope that it will continue like that. But you know, I like blue, and you know me. You look yeah. at my glasses; they're blue. <laughs> yeah. And I have seven different colors huh, on my glasses, and and but I I like to wear the blue over and over. And uh, I love blue, and uh, so I um, I um, and, and by the way, in a room, I never did a blue, which is amazing. I don't yeah, know, yeah. I don't know why. Um, um, it's changing now soon, by the way. But anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I cannot do this show with you every night because I feel like I'm at my home and I start talking. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, um, uh, Monday, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble. So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, the 18, you know, the, the Reserva Real, Romeo and Juliet, is, is, um, is one of the best-selling brands in the United States. Not to say the, the best-seller, but but it is one of the best-sellers. And... Um, and uh, we, we, we have been working on it uh, to bring uh, a little bit more complexity and taking our, taking our uh, consumers in a journey of flavors and profiles. And, and you know, because uh, I remember when I started, I've been going in a journey of flavors and new experiences. And we want to do that for our consumers of, uh, of our brands and, and taste changes and taste uh, elevate. And we wanted to be able to provide in that brand different flavors not only of the romeo modern interpretation but also in in our in our classic uh, lines and that's what we did reserva real the original dominican uh, made in dominican was uh, is a is a ecuador um, a connecticut wrapper and uh, mild fantastic flavor uh very balanced very smooth and so the key on this this is very I get very nervous when I'm doing this type of blends, right? Because you, you know, it's uh, when you do a brand, uh, you know, for aging room, it's different, you know, but uh, for something that had been for so long since 1875, 
that's uh, really scary. Yeah. Uh, and so we, we wanted to get the basic things that, that, that people like about the Reserva Real, which became the creaminess, the smooth, and things like that. And then a sprinkle, what I call a sprinkler with the Nicaraguan tobacco origin, which is a, a land of uh, volcanoes, fuller body and uh, a little bit. So we wanted to bring that, but without losing that. It's not an easy thing. And uh, so I look up because we don't have a factory in, in, in Nicaragua. So we have been depending in two, our major um, uh, partners, which are A.J. Fernandez and, and, and Placencia uh, Cigars. and, and uh, and, and we, we develop an amazing blend, I believe, and uh, that I capture those elements uh, of the traditional um, Reserva Real Romeo and Juliet, but also give it a little bit more flavorful and, and more complexity. Um, you ne I mean, that's well, I'll talk about it when I get towards the end, but yes, I agree with everything you said on that cigar. Um, yeah, and like, a, it, it's a very different cigar than I've had out of AJ before. Um, so it kind of shows another side that AJ can, can put together, you know, the tobaccos, uh, working with you on, on that profile. Um, cause it is a very different cigar than I've had out of AJ before. Yeah. You see, uh, AJ has his particular way of flavors that he likes, right? Um, uh, I personally have different flavors that I like and different profiles. But when you're blending for something like this, one of the things that I've been great working with AJ and with Placencia and, uh, and by the way, I love working with other people. I, I did something with Ernesto Perez Carrillo. I love working with these people that know so much and I'm learning. I mean, I mean like, I feel like a kid in a chocolate factory. Uh, when I started with Perdomo making our Oliveros Gran Reserva. And then, you know, I, I, I love this learning from these people that know so much. And, um, and uh, so uh, they understand, uh, you know, so we, we put, our goals, you know, so we don't take cigar and this is what we want. We put our goals and especially brands like this. This is what we have and this is what we want. Um, and, and then we go from there. So we have this in this brand, right? Not in other um, a specific uh, goals that we're looking for. Um, it's a new form for me uh, to, uh, to blend. But I think what we have been um, a little bit successful is to look at the brand and the blend and being able to match it, right? So listen, today you may have smoked three or four cigars. They are amazing, but it's not good for the Reserva Real Romeo and Julia. So not everyone has to go with their own identity. So we're trying to create, just like we're doing in the packaging and things, in the flavor profile, we're trying to create uh, a journey in, for that brand. So it's, it's a, it's a it's exciting, but it's, uh, it's, I get nervous, eh? Very nervous. <laughs> uh, you did, this, this was, this is really good. Um, the other cigar you came out with, uh, late last year, early this year, it started to hit. And this one flew under the radar a bit, and I've been, I was really impressed with it, was the, uh, the Connecticut Nicaragua. Um, which is that, that Nicaraguan shade grown Connecticut seed wrapper on that. Um, that was a really good cigar. Absolutely. I saw your review not long ago, actually. Eh? Um, uh, and, and, and I think you nailed it. Listen, it's hard when you're doing so many releases and things like that. But, um, but we, are, we are dedicated to, to bring new experiences to our consumer. That's what we are all about. And, and this was, uh, we had the 1875 brand, um, which uh, the one in Dominican uses a... a uh, Java, uh, 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 yeah, Java uh, wrapper, and then we we decided to to do something a little bit different. So we started with the 1875 Nicaragua, which is a, an Habano Claro wrapper, and then we wanted to do something different. So we are basically providing what well, our idea of that is providing on the 1875 a flavors that start with with our classic one, then the the Habano Claro. And then we wanted to do it the Connecticut, but it was, you know, there are a lot of Connecticut. Yeah. The so this was my interpretation. And by the way, it's a lot of great Connecticut. Because, you know, I was not a Connecticut smoker, right? I was not. But it's a number one seller of rapper in the United States. It's, it's very high uh, still. And uh, so we wanted to bring, but we wanted, we did not want to lose the, 
We wanted to do something different, but we did not want to lose our consumers on that. So I uh, talked into to Ernesto Placencia, and uh, we came out with that, a seed grown, uh, because you're, you're, you know, you have the Ecuadorian Connecticut, you have the Honduras that have been used, um, that he started growing, by the way, and then the Nicaragua is different soil, and it's just a different, uh, different, uh, a different flavor. So that's what we tried to do. Yeah, it was a very, very enjoyable cigar. Uh, very well priced as well. Um, as well. Yeah. Uh, so like I said, if you're, I, I, you know, if you're a Connecticut fan, I'm encouraging you to give that cigar a try. Um, you, you, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Yeah, because uh, you know it's funny what we found on that strength of that variety of the Connecticut, right? So you know, if you smoke a USA Connecticut. Uh, uh, wrapper, light wrapper, has a specific flavor and aftertaste, right? Has a specific flavor. And then the the one in growing in Ecuador has lost that. It's different. So you, you can tell when you are doing an Ecuador, smoking in Ecuador, has, it's a different flavor profile. But this one is, uh, is one of the uh, original seeds uh, grown in, in Connecticut. And it's uh, it's new, uh, grown in in Nicaragua. So uh, I think it's uh, it's closer to the original USA, but it's still without the aftertaste and uh, obviously better price. So because uh, you know every anything grows in in, in the United States, uh, just because of the labor and many other things, is very expensive. So we were able to provide something different. Yeah, I I I, uh, I agree. I um. I said it was one that really caught my attention this year, um, that cigar, um, for sure. And it kind of, again, I think there's a lot of great things that have been going on there, um, with, with, especially with Romeo Julieta this year. It's been a big year, I think, for you guys with that. It, it, well, this is the year that we call it internally. This is a year for Romeo and Juliet, eh? So we're doing now, <laughs> right. now the Reserva Real. And let me tell you, Reserva Real came out during this difficult time, right? So we were... We had our plans, right? But you know, God is funny, so you wanted you wanted uh, make plans, and God said, "Yeah, of course, yeah." We had all this plan out and how we're gonna do the release. Uh, we started little by little at TPE. We we were we show it. We start taking pre-orders, and we were, we had a, com- a complete launching plan. And uh, that changed obviously. But we launched this in the middle of the pandemic. You, you right? did. You it did. Came out. Uh, it came out, and. Uh, um, you know, obviously, many people can say it's crazy, right? So, uh, but uh, it worked out because uh, one of the things that people during these difficult times are look for um, um, heritage brand, really brands that they know, right? The names that they have been there, have seen for those time. And this was a way that if you ask for Romeo and Julia, then they were able to say, well, we got the newest one. And it worked out. It's, it's uh, actually, I think it's one of the only major release that has us was done at during the beginning of the pandemic so we are taking risk um, um with risk listen things can happen we are extremely happy that the performance is uh it's amazing eh? it's amazing no one retailer actually commented on that to me um and how how this like this one came out in the middle of the pandemic and it it's 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 moving very very well for them they were telling me um so, you know, and they were, they were completely surprised, uh, you know, and they, they tend to just buy a lot of the portfolio of Altidus to begin with, but, you know, this one came on the shelves and, and people came in and gravitated to it. Um, it's a familiar name. It's a different spin on it. Um, but I think it's also one that if you are a Reserva Real smoker, you could definitely appreciate this blend. I mean, there's no question about it. I think so. And listen, you know, uh, I am a believer that uh, you have a journey in flavors and profiles. Yeah. I love to eat, and as, as I'm sure, like we mentioned at the beginning, I've been cooking a lot, but the, the thing is uh, uh, you're looking for different flavors and profiles. So m- our job and my philosophy is that I want to take you, the consumer, in a journey. I want to tell you, I want to give you different things. Not, not all are going to be successful, by the way. Um, so far has been fantastic, but uh, well, I know I can tell it. I can tell it my bosses. Hey, by the way, this is not going to be. You know, it's not possible to be like the very. And then and it happens. But uh, but uh, this, um, yeah, it's be this business. Another thing we're doing this year, by the way, we also paying a lot of attention. We started doing last year, uh, paying attention to our other brands that we have that we call it portfolio brands. 
like the Trinidad, right? That we did release that. Yeah. Uh, this year, we're coming out with a new spin on it. Very good as well. Uh, we are, uh, you know, Henry Clay, that we did last year. We're coming out with this limited edition that we just released. Uh, so we, we are paying attention to our, to our um, we cannot be a company with only three brands and no four brands. We want to be able to provide the consumer, the retailers, uh, a very strong portfolio with brand and concept. And that's an important part. Oh, totally uh, into it on that. Uh, I like that. Um, yeah, I just want to remind folks again, if you haven't gotten in on the contest um, for the Travel Humaner and the Torch Lighter, just put in what your first Romeo Julieta cigar is with the hashtag. Hashtag RYJ1875. By the way, Alan Rubin, even if you put hashtag RYJ1875, Eighteen seventy-five. Sorry, my friend. I don't think you qualify. <laughs> no, Alan's pretty good on stuff like that. Um, I'll give him credit. He actually technically is ineligible, but um, he just—I know he likes to share share his experiences with that. So, uh, we'll, uh, yeah, yeah. But sorry, Alan. <laughs> uh, and, and so, Raphael, you mentioned Henry Clay, and hold Henry on. Clay's. I'm sorry. Hold, hold on one second. There, there's one other Romeo and Juliet release this year. And that's a JR exclusive, correct? Oh, yes. yes. Well, we are actually, I, I did forget the JR exclusive, correct, yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Passion. Yes. Uh, yep. Romeo and Juliet, Passion. Um, you know, um, the thing is, um, uh, we are going back to, you know, we do a lot of private labels to a specific, a specific uh, store. So uh, for them, we, we put a, it's a beautiful red box with the motif of the of the balcony, um, uh, and but you know we we wanted to to bring something a little bit different to that, and we did a blend um, out of um, uh, out of uh, um, uh, Honduras, uh, Tabacalera Flor de Copan, and that is, is an amazing blend. Uh, incorporates tobacco grown there in the, the next to the factory. Uh, in that area uh, with um, a Criollo uh, 98 as uh, variety, a Bano variety, but also incorporates a little bit uh, of other uh, tobacco. So we, and, and the wrapper, that is just a beautiful wrapper. That is, uh, if you look at that wrapper, it's the closest one thing that you can have to a Cuban uh, wrapper, right? Grown in Cuba. We, we felt fantastic with that. So the passion. Uh, the Passion is coming to an end and we're changing the, uh, we, we're going to be uh, releasing one after that um, as a follow-up, uh, something that uh, we are extremely proud, has been, has been doing extremely, extremely well. But again, going to the, going to the DNA of the brand, uh, the DNA of the brand, I'm a Passion. What else can you know when you have Romeo and Juliet, that passion and love, and that's what we felt. And by the way, that's the passion that the people in Flor de Copan and Tabaca de Garcia feels every day. Um, I'm amazed for these people that work so hard to make the best cigar they can. This is, uh, and these are factories that we haven't talked much because, you know, they, they, they are, you know, they dare they make these brands, but we are calling attention to these brands uh, and the factories because they're doing an amazing job. Very, yeah, excellent. You know, Raphael, you mentioned Casa de Monte Cristo JR. Um, I'll kind of move this question up a bit because it's like getting a good segue. You've been working with Pepin on a few things right now that have been going into those stores. We, oh man, let me tell you, I love working with, with Pepin, right? It's, it's a guy that I, I admire, right? That, that this represents uh, um, an amazing the culture of tobacco, different point of view, and his family, Jaime, and and Gianni and the, you know, the whole, everybody and what they do. And, and Pepin, by the way, Pepin was called Mr. Monte Cristo in Cuba. Right? <laughs> so, I mean, there's, there's a parallel there. So we, yeah, we released, we're looking back to some amazing brands that we had in portfolio and, 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 and I found Cabañas. Cabañas was the, the first premium cigar ever to be made in Cuba, released in Cuba. So it's the oldest Cuban cigar brand. And, uh, and uh, you know, when I heard that, when I saw that in a portfolio, I said Pepin. And I was so proud and so pleased. 
when Pepin um, decided, you know, agreed to, to work on this uh, project uh, with me and with us. Um, Cabaña is this. And then we did something special that was just released, although we, we came out, we uh, did it a year ago. So the, a, an exclusive for Casa de Monte Cristo yep. uh, by, uh, by my father, my father exclusive. Let me tell you, that is an amazing, amazing cigar, right? Um, I must tell you, I'm very intimidated when I'm working with some of these uh, iconic people, right? Eh? Uh, because, you know, I, I feel so little right next to this, uh, you know. And, and maybe that's why I eat too much, you know, <laughs> at, least, at least to have a physical presence. Um, <laughs> but these people have so much knowledge, right? And have so much understanding, uh, uh, such an understanding of the tobacco and the premium cigars and the seeds and what they're doing that um, for me has been an amazing year. So Cabaña, I don't know if uh, some of you guys haven't tried the Cabaña. Again, number, the, the first cigar brand in Cuba. And now we had a reverse of that. Uh, we look uh, in terms of the look and feeling of the classic one, uh, classic look uh, of that in a papered, uh, papered uh, uh, wrap uh, box. And uh, what an amazing blend. And a fantastic price, I may add, eh? I may add. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Nick O'Brady and I were talking about that cigar too, and it's aging like really good. Uh, oh, I the have aging, to tell aging you. potential on that cigar has been very good. Because you're right. Not every cigar has aging potential. Right. right. Not every cigar. Um, uh, because, uh, you know, if you, if you are in other countries and you buy cigar from other countries, sometimes you buy the cigar. Um, and see how politically I put it. Eh? If you are in another country, you buy cigars <laughs> in other countries, and uh, you, you know, you buy cigars knowing that you're gonna age it, right? And they're gonna get fantastic or better after aging. But here in the United States, we're trying to uh, we're trying to bring the cigar uh, when it's optimal for the consumer, right? Uh, so we do a lot of the we do the aging, the fermentation, and things like that. But um, but some in, uh, uh, are just get better and better. They will change, eh? they will change, uh, but they get better and better, in my opinion. I, I totally agree with that. And uh, yeah, I always, that's a whole fun part of what we do here, too. No, so I we, was looking in my yeah. humidor today. Mm -hmm. No, go I ahead. In my humidor, and I can tell you, I have boxes there. Uh, the prensado. Remember the prensado from uh, uh, Alan Rubin? Yep. I have prensado from the when they first came out. Uh, I have, uh, you know, maybe 10 boxes. I have CAOs. I have La Gloria Cubana that were made in Miami. In Miami. Um, I, I, I have such an uh, eclectic look of different cigars that I like. And uh, obviously, I had a store, so whenever I got something good, I kept it. I say I'm gonna keep it, and and Hank and I get to smoke. Today we're smoking some of those very old uh, CAO. I forgot sake, I would say I was having today a CAO made by Nick Perdomo. <laughs> oh wow, Nick Perdomo. This is uh, uh, we we do have um, yeah. So I I I love some of these cigars that just get can uh, continue to get better and better. Yeah, no, I, I, that's like I said. That's always a fun part of of cigars too. We were kind of uh, segueing into Henry Clay, uh, a very active brand this, uh, the last few years, um, and you just announced the new Warhawk Rebellious, and that's a completely different Henry Clay than what we've seen before. That's correct, and you know, with Henry Clay, um, the company did long before I got here. Um, renew the com the the. The Henry Clay with a small release, a, uh, a very limited release with tatuaje. So it was a Henry Clay tatuaje. Yep. And then, uh, we did, uh, they did the stall cut, uh, which was, by the way, was this, the, the, the set way for your Vega Fina stall cut that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that that's the Henry Clay stall cut. Then, um, then the brand is, was there for a little bit. And then uh, last year, uh, March of last year, we released the Henry Clay Warhawk. Different concept. I wanted to do something different, so it was a Connecticut wrapper, uh, Ecuadorian Connecticut, but with a broad leaf, which is uh, a traditionally right. that cigar, mm -hmm. as a broad leaf, as as a binder, and um, and that is um, 
he did fantastically. Eh? So we just uh, uh, started doing well. So we now continue that uh, originally it was envisioned to have a three three cigar series, and uh, this year. So now I uh, I work again with AJ Fernandez, and although we say 100% Nicaragua, I'm gonna give you the I'm gonna give you the scoop, like you say, you know, uh, <laughs> the scoop. So this is 100% Nicaragua, but the key, the key is that this has a broad leaf binder grown in Nicaragua. Yeah. in Nicaragua, in Nicaragua. So we say Nicaragua, but it's a broad leaf grown by A.J. Fernandez, right? As a binder on this cigar. And then why stop there? We, you know, this is a limited edition, why stop there? So we went to a wrapper that is very rare because it's something that A.J. did uh, it aged and he kept it there. And I'm not sure if he remember he had it there, uh, but on, on one of the tours, uh, talking with him and walking and he was showing me different things. Couple, uh, a, a little area that we had this wrapper, very rare, very well aged, tremendously well aged. And uh, so we, I think it's something special. So we wanted to sprinkle that, uh, um, that Nicaragua in, into this limited edition. So it's limited edition, very limited amount of boxes um, because of, it's very unique. Oh, so, so it does have the broadleaf in there though. So that, yeah, that kind what of- is grown, What is grown in Nicaragua. Yes, yes. So, uh, I, because of all these things with regulations, we're saying 100% Nicaragua. Yeah, I mean, I've seen AJ been posting pictures of the broadleaf, so. Oh, let me tell you, an amazing broadleaf, right? Yeah. That's They're huge. Good. Actually, I think today or, two, or yesterday he, he put posted a a, a a picture, right? And uh, these are huge. These are well, I cannot do it like here. It's like amazing. Uh, 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 and and then it's it's aged a little bit different than in, in in Connecticut, right? So normally in Connecticut, when you cut the plant, you do it in cold cut, uh, uh, the whole plant. And now here it is uh, just like you do the whole thing by primes, and then it's aged and. Uh, separate and, uh, and fermented, so it's a very different process. Yeah, no, so that's that's pretty. That like I said that's that's pretty exciting there. Um, and Aaron smoking that. And we'll we'll hit those at the end of the segment uh, here. What we're smoking. Um, but the so you have you know there's other brands. Um, it seems like this year has been a, like last year was a big year for H Up Men and Monte Cristo. A little quieter for those brands this year, I'd say, right? Or is, is uh, it any- until now? Okay, <laughs> until now. Uh, their plans for <laughs> amazing this year. Two, not one, two amazing Monte Cristos. Um, I was gonna say because every year there's a Monte Cristo. That well, it, yeah, it, that's what. So I was wondering what was if if, there, if we were gonna see anything with that. It's it will be it will be a little bit of um, you know we delay a little bit of the things because of the COVID nineteen. Uh, so we're doing the the introduction uh, little by little and we expand it a little bit more. But the one thing that we're trying to do now uh, is to let, you know, not, you know, when we do so many releases at one and, you know, when we do the show, we release so many things, right? And, and, and I can tell you something like Ex Orman Española, a fantastic cigar. It fell through because it's, you know, it's, you know, the group of the maestro before. So you do so many releases, but part of our strategy this year uh, not going to the show was to be able to give more time to the brands to breathe right. and to pull that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Hispaniola. I know we talked about it the last time you were on and that's the Andulio. I, I really like that cigar a lot. Exactly. And listen, you know, I, I don't want to copy and, and you know, I, we were not the first one to come up with and you. And, and then, you know, what do you do? So, you know, you don't want to copy things, you know, we can do the same thing, but we don't want to copy. So we, what we did in that one is then do you, is part of the story, but it's not the main character of the story. Right. It enhances the flavor. It gives you, you smoke a cigar and you say, wow, there's something different, but it's not on your face, that type of thing. So that is one of the most difficult blend that I have done. Right. Uh, because when I work at, when I came into the company, they were already working on this one. And then we went to, okay, so let's not only, let's not buy the Andujos, because do the regulatory things, we need to know exactly what it has inside, well, you know, how it's made, the all the ingredients, and with Andujos, we couldn't tell the ingredients, because you buy this, this Andujos already made, right? Mm-hmm. So we, uh, our supplier, which is an amazing 
people, family since 1962 there, the uh, Jose Mendez company, you know, uh, they made the, the Anduyo for us specifically with our requirements. And, um, and we, were just, we were just so thrilled to do that. But again, so many, so many releases at one is, is difficult. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, anything with Aging Room? It's, um, I know you got number one cigar of the year. Um, anything with Aging Room you have plans for in the next year? Yes, for this year, actually. Okay. Uh, we do have, uh, we have something coming up in the same Aging Room, Cuatro Nicaragua. So mm -hmm. We have an expansion there. And then something very exciting for next year as well. And then at the end of this year, in addition, we, got, we are, you know, we have these small batches uh, of things. So we're coming with a new concept and a new thing. So very rare tobaccos that we are launching this year uh, on that as a follow-up. So in the Asian room, we are, uh, you know, something that you know that we started doing with the Asian room, looking at some uh, rare tobaccos and, and very limited editions and things like that. And it's funny because I was listening today to someone talking about what is a boutique? What is boutique? What does yeah. boutique mean, right? And, um, and that's what I mean what it means, right? A small production with very rare, very, uh, very uh, you know, difficult to find tobacco. So we are concentrating on that as well. At the same time that we're expanding our, our aging room Cuatro Nicaragua line. It's very yeah. exciting. That's great. That's great to hear. Aaron, anything else on brands we want to hit? Um, I don't think so. I think you got them all. Awesome. Awesome. There's a lot of exciting stuff there. A um, couple of other questions, Raphael. How are you doing on time? I, I nothing to do with my life. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna the keep only you... thing that I questioned that I, I said, man, I shouldn't have, but I can just text my son to bring it, is more rum. I didn't think that <laughs> I should have brought my whole bottle. And I have <laughs> the Sacapa EXO, which is an amazing rum. I, you know, this is a special occasion for me. Like I say, I'm in a celebration mood. So I took my best rum that I had, or one of my best rum that I had, and I wanted to share it while I do this. I'm planning. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Um, I just wanted to ask a couple questions on, uh, like you want, uh, question, one more question on TPE. We haven't really talked about TPE. You had your first TPE this, this year. Uh, what was your experience like? And is it something you guys are going to go back and continue to do that particular show? Yeah, absolutely. Um, actually, I have attended a TPE first under uh, as Boutique Blend for one time. And um, we, we didn't think it was what we needed as a very small manufacturer uh, at the time. Then I went back um, probably, like, I think it was last year or two years ago. Um, with, uh, with Altadis, they had their booth there, so I went to see. And uh, then this year, I was part of the exhibit, the exhibit, ex exhibitors. Um, what I found this year in TP was an amazing change, right? An amazing uh, uh, ev evolution of a show, and I think it has a lot of room to grow. I am extremely excited because. Uh, as, as many of the people that visited uh, the show will tell you, and I heard them say, and that's how I felt, it was uh, a, a more, a, a more um, um, family-oriented type of feeling. And uh, many people say, this is what I, like the IPCPR or CP, uh, uh, um, RTDA used to look like, right? Mm -hmm. So it was a smaller one. I think uh, I love it. Uh, because one of the things that it was fantastic about the show, uh, one is educational things that you have, and they, but also at night, you all together, they have these parties on these things and what have you, and in all the industry together. So uh, when you are uh, uh, like me, I went to the, to the uh, IPCPR, being a small company, and, and, and you know, I didn't have the money to invite people and things like that, or a retailer tell me all the time, they go and you know, they don't feel part of it. Because a long time, if you remember uh, the IPCPR or RTDA before, you had all these parties, right? Or the big companies that everybody was involved or everybody was invited. But that changed to economical conditions. And, um, and, and you know, there are some people that fell behind, right? That they're not part, you know, if they're not invited to your 
to your compound like I have never been invited. But anyway, some you know someday, okay. You're um, coming. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. So you got, yeah, I know. You got to keep Martin there. That's fantastic, and all the that's okay. So no, <laughs> the, the small manufacturers uh, can feel left behind. Some small retailers can feel, you know, they're not invited to the big nights or the big things or dinners or what have you. But what I felt at the TPE was, uh, you know, these, uh, these family-oriented things, right? I, I felt it, and I think it was, um, um, uh, it was a unique experience, and it's something to build on. Uh, so, yeah, we are going, and, and we're very excited about uh, going, um, um, you know, even if uh, um, next year, for hopefully in January, everything continues to be, to be going. But I think it's a great opportunity to a small manufacturers uh, as well as established manufacturers and uh, and retailers that's good that's good to hear good to hear i had a it was like i said i i, I enjoyed my first tpe this, this was my first and i really enjoyed it a lot no and they listen that you you know you, i i i heard you cover so the tpe and you talk about the the media section right and the things like that and the what you know so just like I felt as a manufacturer, you felt as according to your uh, to your uh, coverage. You know, you had a media a media area that you could write and do the space and things like that. All these are fantastic ideas, right? That um, that are are necessary to make you feel uh, part of it and do your job. Do your job. Uh, it was those little things. I mean, I, I I did make a lot of use of that room. Uh, I did the Carl Malone interview in there. There was, they helped get me get Carl Malone to to the interview room, which is not something I've had trade shows help me with in the past. Um, when, when I, so th th it was those little things, and oh by the way, it was the guys running tobacco business who helped me while they're covering the show which I was very grateful to those guys for, uh, to do that. So it was, there were a lot of little things there that, that made it. And like I said, so I plan on being back next year for sure. Absolutely. And I, yeah. I, that's how I felt as a manufacturer, right? And yeah. although, listen, we have a small booth, you know, we didn't have anything major, um, uh, you know, um, hopefully not everybody's going to come up with bigger and bigger and bigger because, you know, um, like I tell my wife sometimes, bigger, not necessarily better, you know? No, that's true. That's true. Um, you know? That's true. That's really true. Now, I know you I know you love steak, right? Because because I went to Bizarre I Meats it. with you. Yeah. Which is a little secret, Raphael. I actually went back to Bizarre Meats for the second time just uh, <laughs> after that. <laughs> it was that good. Um, very good. Very so, good. So I want to mention our Cattle Baron Cigars uh, steak question of the night. And this is on steak. Raphael, what is your favorite cut of steak? For me, is the filet mignon, and oh, okay. the, and the uh, um, I sometimes can I even pronounce it the uh, brignon, uh, br um, can I even pronounce it the French? Uh, um, I can I even pronounce it the one, but it's, it's the cut of you, the you? The uh, no, it's, no, it will come to me. Okay, um, <laughs> um, but it's but but for me, it's it's a filet mignon. It's uh, um, it's uh, it's it's for me, it's uh, the 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 best one for me. And I try it all meats. I love, I'm a meat lover, although I'm changing a lot lately. Eh? I'm going to seafood and, and I started, at least for color, some, some vegetables around. Okay. Um, yeah, but, uh, you, know, uh, you know, it's, um, but I've been listening to some of your questions, too, especially at Nestor and some other people on that, on the, the best cigars, uh, the best uh, steakhouse. Yeah, yeah, you can answer that one, too. Ah, uh, Okay. So, you know, like Ernesto mentioned is um, Burns in, um, in, um, in Tampa. It's a very traditional, very old place. I remember going there for the first time, the first IPCPR that I, I, I attended was in Tampa, maybe 2001, was it? Um, and, and it's impressive because they have a, a separate floor just for dessert. So you finish your, your meal and then you go to the second floor and you have the dessert there. Uh, and, um, uh, and that is the, that I think for, for, uh, for me is, is, is one of the, the, the best. But here in Miami, uh, I mean, I go to New York a lot. Um, um, and, and, you know, Club 21 is an amazing place that I like. 
uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's very old traditional restaurant and a very steakhouse. Uh, but uh, here in Miami, um, um, you have one that is for me is my favorite is, is Forge on Forty First Street uh, on by by um, by um, uh, by Miami Beach on Forty First Street. Okay. Um, Forge is traditional, but it has some uh, some age and bone in steaks that are are amazing. Now, because I live a block from uh, from uh, from uh, Chula's, I do go out to a lot to the Chula Steakhouse that you when you go to Miami Steak next to it. Yep. And uh, that's one. This is the original one. Huh? No, no. Yeah, I, the, I, yep, I've been, I went there with Nick, actually, yeah. Right, well, Nick, uh, yeah, I've seen Nick there many times. Yeah. Uh, Nick he's, got a ta- he's got a table there, literally. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So <laughs> that's one, it, it got, it got uh, so th- those three for me, the uh, Burns in Tampa, Club 21 in New York City, and uh, and uh, uh, Forge and, and Don Chula in uh, the original one in Miami Lakes. There you go, oh, and uh, I have to try those other. Two. I've been to Shoes, but I gotta try the other two. Um, well, like like a next to mention Saga Saga in 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 Santiago. You can add. I mean, you know, come on, that that huge steak uh, is is the best. You, I mean, you know, it's very different that you can. Oh, add. those tomahawks! Yeah, yeah, they're the best. They that that is. There's no better tomahawk I've had than that. Absolutely, and, and you know, in Spain as well. I actually I've seen I've seen one of my favorite hotels. I've seen in Neto Perez Carrillo come out of that hotel. So I go to a lot of the the restaurant that he goes uh, in 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 Madrid. So, uh, uh, but I, yeah, I think it's something that America does very well. Eh? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, cool. you can find some great steakhouse around the world, but hey, America is is the best one of that. Absolutely. So let's talk about what we were smoking tonight. Um, and I want to mention that that is sponsored by Tailored Smoke, located in the heart of downtown Charlotte's Epicenter and now just near the Charlotte Motor Speedway in Concord, North Carolina. Tailored Smoke is your one-stop shop for a tailored smoking experience. So, Aaron, you are smoking the uh, Warhawk Rebellious. Yes, this is what I'm smoking today. If you can show up. I think you good. might be one of the first people outside our company yeah. to smoke that cigar. Actually, even inside the company, eh? I will say. <laughs> so this is a, it's definitely a, kind of a, a good contrast to the original Warhawk that came out last year because the Warhawk last year was uh, much lighter, smooth, creamy, kind of, you know, the Connecticut style. Uh, this is definitely more on the peppery side. It's got a little bit of creaminess to it, a little bit of mustiness to it. Um, but the pepper kind of, keeps its like keeps its level throughout the cigar it kind of maintains all the way through um so it's definitely you know if you could if you wanted to like start your day with the the warhawk and then follow it up with this i don't think there'd be any kind of uh anything between them that's gonna run over the other one so it's two completely different experiences um and this is it's smoking well um construction is fantastic um it's yeah, it's it's a nice smoke. Uh, retrohale is not too strong. The pepper's still there, but it's not overbearing. It doesn't burn your nostrils or anything like that. So uh, I think it's a well done cigar, and it's definitely, I guess, the rebel rebellious name goes well with how it how it kind of works along with the re- original Warhawk. So it's it's a nice uh, balance to it. Well, I'm glad you like it, and you you describe it what we tried to do, right? So it's rebellious the name when we you know we already had a precede name when I started working on the blend with that. So, you know, you want to be a rebellious, although these days you have to be careful with anything that you, you say and how you say it. But the mm-hmm. idea is a rebellious against that flavor and, and to, be, to, be, uh, to be the peppery. It's, it's amazing because, you know, you, how many cigars you have that the peppery it starts, right? And then it yep. goes down and then yep. you, you either get used to it or it's gone. Right. Um, so that's, a, and especially the difficult part of that, having that, in a not too strong cigar, uh, so that was the the, the most uh, the, the most difficult. And this is one that we already had the idea of what I wanted. So we we came to this one with what I wanted. This is what we we wanted to do. So how you get there? Let me tell you, it's anybody's guess. It's anybody's <laughs> guess. Okay, so you start working uh, towards that, right? Right. And and I think the key at the end, we try a lot of different blends. And it was easier because it was a small, a small production. 
So we were able to get tobaccos that, you know, they're not a lot of those available. Um, but the key on that is not only the binder, which uh, I think it's a, if I had to give you a tip, it's, it's, it's the key for to have that peppery around because it's a Nicaraguan broadleaf. I mean, you know, it has that, the best of both worlds. But in addition, then uh, to be able to have the smoothen uh, is that wrapper that is extremely rare and, and, and well aged. So that combination, uh, I think it did it. Did it. Hold on. All right, well, what are you smoking? I'm smoking the Reserva Real, uh, Nicaragua. Um, and let's go to the band here. Raphael, I think you, you nailed this um, exactly what you said earlier. So this thing's going to start out, and, you know, it's going to be a nutty, creamy cigar up front. Um, really coming at with with some nice flavor, good medium body to it. As you smoke it, you're going to get some of that A.J. Fernandez oomph to it, a little of the spice. Right. You're going to get some of the earthy flavors. Um, it's a gr It's like a best of both worlds is what you're getting there. But I really, like I said, that nutty creaminess up front is something a little different than I've seen out of an A.J. Fernandez cigar before. Um, and, it, again, it just, it's a testament to what, what you guys are doing with this. And, and, like I said, I can see this cigar. If someone's a Romeo and Julia Reserva Real smoker, this is a great cigar as a next step for them to go to. Um, and I think it could become a, easily an everyday cigar for people. Um, this is very, very good, this cigar. And then let me just tell you, uh, one thing that you, uh, Aaron, can feel as well, uh, feel as well with the Henry Clay uh, Warheart Rebellious, and, and now uh, you will and I am smoking the same cigar, the the aroma of the cigar. Yeah. I can tell you, that aroma, I, you know, I when I'm cooking and when I'm eating, then, you know, I love those restaurants that when you are four people, they bring you the plate and they open at the same time. And, and then I, I, you know, I do these things and I what because I fell in love with the aroma first before I, I go. And so what we're trying to do is not only have a fantastic blend and, and, and the great taste and specific things that we're looking for the blend, but I, it has to have that aroma. I did the Bohème, La Bohème, when I, uh, you know, before I joined uh, after this with uh, the Asian Room uh, Boutique Blend Days. And I, I, you know, I I love, I love aromas on the cigars. And it brings me back to a specific times and a specific moments in my life. And, uh, and, and I, I cannot tell you how many blends I have done that it, they, they smoke great, but they don't, they, they just don't have that aroma and we don't, just don't do it. I, I, for me, it has to have a combination. So in these two cigars that you guys are doing, uh, are smoking now and, and one that I'm smoking and the other one before that I was smoking as well um, is the aroma. And, and yeah. as, as to that, you know, in AJ, we have been able to find a partner uh, that it, it just doesn't impose his criteria. This is what I like and this is what it is. We know that we are creative. Uh, he knows that we we're trying to 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 do amazing things with amazing blends, and uh, so we don't go. We 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 know what we go what we want the goal, but not preconceived ideas or this is what I like. No no no, this is what we need to go and how can we get there? So it's a journey and uh, it's um, it's one of the most amazing things being able to create a blend. I I I am so. Uh, so humble to, to see people like uh, in the industry you mentioned, you know, doing also work with uh, with um, uh, um, Pepin and, and you know uh, Nesto Perez Castillo, Perdomo. Uh, these are icon people, that are, you know, that that they just know a lot of that. And for us to be able to to come up with ideas to work on that direction, this uh, is a humbling experience. I have to tell you. Well, it's, it's very good. You know, the other comment I want to make on that cigar, you mentioned the complexity, like how you kind of got a lot more complexity and you got that AJ Fernandez factor in there on top of like what I would say is a base Romeo Real profile. And it definitely, this cigar is a nice cigar. If you like transitions, if you like a lot of flavors on the tongue, you're going to get it with that, with that Reserva Real Nicaragua for sure. It is, and let me tell you, I'm a musician, so you know, I'm my, as you know, my stepson is a, is a, is a, a producer, and he sits there with his uh, uh, instrument, and then you know, you move something up, and you change this, and you change that, and you change it. So I feel the same way. So 
I said to the AIA, listen, this is what we need to do. Okay, so you got the balance over here. The balance has to be here, but then you're looking at complexity and the flavors and the thing. So it's like the original one, and then we go into, okay, so yeah. a little bit more here, a little bit more here, a little bit. And listen, it's very simple to say, right? It is, you know, it's not easy to get it because sometimes you change a little bit and then everything falls different, right? So uh, perhaps uh, that's not the right mix. And then we go into that. So that's what we try. But trying to be true to those bands and smoothness so that we had in those original yes, bands. Yes, yeah. It, it, it's got a, I want to say a smooth, the smoothest is the word I'm using on this. Um, it, it's just, it's a very nuanced smoke. But like I said, if you want some of those Nicaraguan, you're definitely getting those Nicaraguan characteristics uh, on this cigar. Um, it, it, I can't say enough if folks haven't tried this cigar to go check this because I'm very impressed with now smoking this. Yeah, no, listen, uh, we, you know, I'm doing uh, yeah. maybe 20 to 30 new blends a day a year that we put out. Um, so that means a lot of bad blends without to smoke. Eh? <laughs> and, uh, and that is always fun. I mean, I get... I have to tell you, last last uh, I think it was uh, Sunday. Sunday, I was here on the beach and I was smoking a cigar, a blend that we were working on. I got so sick, and that it was amazing. <laughs> what a bad blend! And you know, it's uh, it's it's something that I had a lot of. Um, you know, I felt very good at the time. I let her age a little bit, and it was horrible. I got sick and. Uh, it's things like that. So, you know, we, we, it's, it's, we, we do a lot of bad things uh, yeah. in order to get one okay blend. It's, 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 it's no, a journey. No, understood. Understood as well. Um, Raphael, I want to do a quick sponsor break, and then we have some fun questions for you. I promise there's nothing that's going to get you into trouble. Okay? Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, so I want to mention uh, JRE Tobacco. Uh, the authentic Corolla leaf is one of the most robust and flavorful leaves out there. During the golden age of cigars of Cuba, it was a leaf of choice to make some of the world's greatest cigars. Because it is one of the most challenging ones to cultivate, it fell out of favor by the 1990s. In the Hamasran Valley of Honduras, Julio Aroa took on the challenge of growing Corolla from the original season. In 2000, he successfully reintroduced authentic Corolla back to the market. With over 50 years' experience in the tobacco business, from growing and curing tobacco to cigar production, the Jerry Tobacco Farm has been able to continue to deliver products to market with authentic Corojo. Now with Jerry Tobacco, Julio and his son Husso bring their very own brand to market, each containing the authentic Corojo leaf. Tadascano is a mild to medium cigar in both Connecticut and Abano. Rancho Luna is a premium medium cigar offered in Abano and Maduro. And Aladino is available in a 100% authentic Corojo Puro, San Andreas Maduro, Ecuador and Connecticut Shade, or Cameroon wrapper representing the Golden Age of Cigars from 1947 to 1961. Now available at your local retailer, be sure to ask for Jerry Tobacco, a legacy that is tasted in every drawer. And by Toscano Cigars, as rustic and strong as the people who smoke them, try Toscano's rustic and full-body flavors and aromas. Made in Italy with 100% dark fire-cured tobacco from the U.S. and Italy, it is one of the best-selling cigars in the world. Toscano Cigars are the perfect combination of American and Italian craftsmanship, whether in the traditional long format or the short format Toscanello. Toscano cigars are dry cured, handmade, and fire cured for your enjoyment anytime, anywhere. Visit your local premium cigar retailer today and look for Toscano cigars today. And by AJ Fernandez Cigars. AJ Fernandez's New World brand is named in honor of the discovery of tobacco by Christopher Columbus's expedition in 1492. Fernandez collaborated with his father Ishmael on the cigar, which is comprised of a wrapper from Nicaragua that covers binder from the Jalapa Valley and a filler blend of Ometepe, Condega, and Esteli tobaccos. The Coraline debuted in 2014, followed by the New World Connecticut, New World Puro Especial, and New World Cameroon. All four blends are able to captivate the palate of any cigar smoker. If you are beginning to discover the fine world of premium handmade cigars, the New World Connecticut is for you. If you're into the rich, full-body blends, Puro Especial is for you. If you're into complex flavors, New World Cameroon's for you. And if you're into the robust and earthy flavors with notes of espresso, the New World Oscuro is definitely for you. Visit www.ajfcigars.com to learn more. And buy M. Bombay Cigars. M. Bombay Cigars represents most of my cigar to culture of Cuba. They select the best of the best quality of tobacco to use in the aging process. M. Bombay Cigars are rolled to Costa Rica by some of the world's most experienced cigar rolls, giving it a unique smoking experience. The band portrays the detailed and artistic nature of our small industry. Try M. Bombay. Gaia, M Cuba, and the M Esteli line. And Bombay Cigars with a cigar is a way of life. And we want to mention uh, Alec Bradley Cigars. Do you really want to hear another cigar that talks about fillers, binders, wrappers, and aging ratings? 
blah, blah, blah. How about this? Pick up an Alec Bradley cigar, smoke it, enjoy it, spend an hour with it. You'll be one happy camper. Visit alecbradley.com. And we want to get into our Live True segment sponsored by Alec Bradley. And, and this, we kind of take a little break from some of the, the hardcore tobacco talk that we just had. We just talked about rappers, binders, and aging and stuff. <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, and and Rafi, I, I we've been asking manufacturers, you, you, we did something similar to Ernesto last week. So some of the questions are a little different, I'm going to ask you. But if you heard the Ernesto segment that we did here uh, with him, there are similar questions we're going to ask you. I, threw, I, threw, I changed up a couple of them. So we know you play the piano, Raphael. Okay, and you are, you know, you know, I've seen you play the piano many times, and you're forming a band, and you're the piano player. Who are you choosing for your lead singer? Oh wow! Oh wow! Oh, Ernesto wow. had the That's drums. Not... You have the piano, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, wow, wow. I don't know. Listen, the problem is I like classical music, right? So some of the people that I will do is uh, like so classical music. But There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, well, you know, but, uh, you know, they're not fun names, right? So, you know, what the heck are you going to have Pavarotti in a, in a, things like that, right? But today, today, I, I was listening a lot to, uh, I listen a lot to, to Spanish music in addition to classical music. So that's, that doesn't count a, a lot. Uh, but uh, today, uh, I have some, we finished early in the office today, so I spent a few hours on the beach, and I was more, uh, I was listening to the to the Eagles. Uh, you know, I uh, oh wow uh, yeah. So I spent most of my day uh, actually I listened most of my day. I had like three hours today on the beach, and I listened to smoking cigar, and I listened mostly to the same song in different ways, right? So I um, so I had um, I had the Eagles, and I have Hotel California. Which I learned today how they came out with the how they wrote the song and things like that. So I was mostly today about working on the Eagles on that. But uh, um, you know what is it? You know I today I also listen in the sound of silence. I listen to ten different variation of the sound of silence. <laughs> and uh, and and one thing that I noted today that I really not not noted Garfield. Uh, how you pronounce it? Gar- Simon and Garfield. Sorry, Simon, yeah. Simon, Simon, Garfunkel. No, Simon Garfunkel. Yes, yeah. Garfunkel. Garfunkel. Yeah, he, Garfunkel. yeah, yeah. Uh, amazing voice. So I heard him in a different way. So he will be. It's, it's an old guy, right? So uh, not funky, modern things like that. But for me, it was a, will be my my choice to have him uh, as a singer for my uh, for my band. He, amazing voice. I, I, I can... An amazing voice and the, the whole thing, right? So I, I listened to that song in 10 different formats, uh, different ways today for modern uh, and, and things like that. But um, the way he did it, and, and Simon, you know, has amazing, but, but he has an amazing different format and that will be my choice. That's a great choice. I, I wouldn't have expected that answer, but that's a great choice. Um, you mentioned you mentioned the Eagles and Hotel California. That Gypsy Kings version that they cover, it's uh, it, it yeah, takes it to another it, level. I mean, I just yeah. I I am a lot into Spanish music, right? right? So in flamenco and things like that, I I rediscover everything in Spanish, and I even became a Spanish citizen. You know, uh, you, you need to have Plan B, right? So this is my plan. You know, uh, so I have I'm Cuban American and now Spanish as well. But uh, one of my first introduction here in the United States to Spanish music, although they're not necessarily from Spain, are the are the Gypsy Kings, uh, amazing song. Yeah, yeah, I, they re- they really did. Good. You might have answered my second question already. Then, um, what your favorite? I know you're an opera fan, but what's your favorite genre of music besides opera? Is it is it the Spanish Latin music? It's do you know I I I like all all songs right so i like all songs so latin music for me is the most uh, i really into latin jazz a lot so i i for i think for the last three years i am going to share with some of this for the last maybe three or four years every morning every morning when i wake up the first thing i do i put a song from arturo sandoval the first thing i do in the morning yeah. Uh, Arturo is a guy that I respect very much, and it, but it goes into different things. So Latin music for me uh, and the Latin jazz for me is an amazing. And then uh, 
I've been rediscovering uh, all Puerto Rican uh, salsa music and and things like that. So uh, that would be, I would say, that for me, it really touches me in a different way. Because, let me tell you why. Because it touches in the jazz section. So you got the African roots, but then and then you have kind of a, the, the, some mix of uh, rock there at one point. Uh, and, and so it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fusion of many different things. Raphael, if you haven't, you mentioned Paul Simon. If you haven't heard his Rhythm of the Saints album, um, he incorporates African musicians and Brazilian musicians. Oh, I and, have it, though. I will you want to you want to check out Rhythm of the Saints? Yeah, um, I saw him perform that in Central Park um, when I lived in New York, and he came out with that whole band. Just they did this big intro, and it was it was it was awesome. So I think you should check that out. Put it on your list if you haven't. The Rhythm I will. Of the Saints. Yeah. I will because I've been rediscovering this uh, music for the fifties and sixties and seventies, right? So. Uh, they have so much, so much meaning. And yeah. what happened is when I started, for example, when I started listening to music, American music, I, I loved the, the music, but I, I didn't pay attention. I couldn't understand the song, the actual lyrics. So I, you know, I, I just, you know, uh, and then now that I, I can pay more attention to it and really understand the lyrics, uh, we have so amazing, uh, so amazing lyrics with things and for example that's why today i i not only i listen to 10 different versions of the sound of the sound of silence but uh the 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 lyrics is amazing it's amazing so i've been rediscovering some of these things i will definitely look for that i'm yeah. really a sucker now for lyrics right so it means i'm a i'm tired of boom boom on things you know yeah. uh, things like that yeah you i think you'll appreciate this I'm going to switch the order of this a bit for a reason. Um, Aaron, just so you're aware. Sure. Um, favorite television series, Raphael? Television series? Yeah, of all time. Oh, or, wow. Yeah. Well, another secret. I, I, two. I have two. That's okay. Yep. Every night, every night, every, every night, when I go to sleep, I watch either Seifel or Frasier. I cannot tell you how many goddamn times I have watched the Seinfeld episode. I start laughing before they say the joke. <laughs> I like oh, I know. And then Fresher the same thing, except Fresher they took it again away from uh, Netflix and um, and now and uh, so I I've been I've been watching Cheers um, 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 there. But uh, uh, let me tell you, it's um, it's uh, yeah, Frasier and, and, and Seinfeld. For me, Seinfeld, amazing, amazing series of all time. It's just, and you, you watch it today. Like I watched it last night in an episode. And it's so, it's so, I mean, you know, you have the fonts and things, very different things, but it's so up to date in everything that is amazing. Yeah, I watched a lot of Frasier. I mean, that character came over from Cheers and that, uh, very successful run after the show, which was unusual to see that. Yeah, no, and the way the things and Miles and him, the way the things that they <laughs> act and how they yeah. act, and you yeah. know, it's, yeah. uh, it's, fun. it's yeah, fun. Yeah, exactly. All right, I'm going to ask this question. I'm, gonna, I'm waiting for someone to answer this question different, but we'll see if that happens. I'm going to keep asking until some favorite holiday of the year. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I do just listen. Um, I have to, which is, uh, the, the, you know, we celebrate Christmas very, uh, um, uh, very big in my house, but it's, uh, we actually celebrate the night before Christmas. So it's uh, Christmas Eve. We call it Noche Buena. That's where the Spanish people meet. And I have always for, since I got to this country, uh, we, we, we always have a big party and I continue that since uh, in my house and, you know, we have 40, 50 people every year and every year we go and we do something different right so um so i i do one is right now the family has continued to grow so um my sister married puerto rican and uh, my my nephew uh um marry a, 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 a brazilian and my brother-in-law marry a nicaraguan so every year we have a different motif and every year we have different food so one year is spanish one there is puerto rican one there is cuban my oh, mother wow. complains every single time because she only likes cuban so she thinks that you have to eat pork and you have to use 
you know, eat yuca and black and uh, rice and beans every Christmas. Otherwise, it's not Christmas. Right. But uh, you know, so on the she goes to the rotation again. She complains every year. So we have Spanish like paella, and then we have Puerto Rican things, and we have Nicaragua. It's one of my favorites. Things like that. So Christmas for us, that is a time a time of family. Uh, however, Fourth of July that is coming. Yeah, you were saying, yeah, that's what I was wondering about. Yeah. Uh, it's uh I, I you know i you know i see these these things uh the firework and what it represents the birth of this country that allows me to be here to talk to you to be thing and let me tell you for me is uh yeah four of july is the the most important for for i i am very big in america and very big on what the american dream is and very big on what it means to people like me around the world that came with nothing right and uh, so yeah four of july you, Aaron, and Raphael probably don't remember this because I don't think you were in the country, Raphael, at the time. But Bicentennial in 1976 was huge. That's oh, I've seen so, the yeah. videos. I've seen the videos. It, it, yeah, it, yeah. So apparently now they're, they're starting to put the plans in place for the 250th celebration in 2026. So I'm wondering if it's going to be anything like that uh, because it was a, that was a very special uh, year for Independence Day. I can tell you that. I know, I know. I've seen the videos. I had to tell you that the, those fireworks display and the whole, but it, it was amazing. So yeah, yeah I, uh, I, it's something that uh, I really, really, yeah. So I can wait yeah. for that. It's, uh, it's an amazing thing. Aaron, you, you were, you were alive for the bicentennial, right? I was born that year. Oh, nineteen so yeah, yeah. Holy said, shit! Oh, yeah, we, I, we, I seem so old, man. It's like, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was, uh, I was sick that night actually. I had a, I had a, I had like a mild flu at that age, so we didn't get to go out. But, but even on TV, we got to watch it, so it was, it was really cool. And uh, yeah, that was. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to 2026. So I, I tell you, on, on, on. Um, uh, on Independence Day, I I record the one from you know I do record the one from New York. I always record the one from DC, which is uh, amazing because you got all the music and yeah. the, and you know it things. And so I we we do a big party in my house all, every year, and, and we watch on the beach the 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 fireworks. And the funny thing is here on the beach. Um, you know, people can do the fire, their own firework, but then you have the city of Miami, you can see that, and then you can see the city of Hollywood, you can see the city of Fort Lauderdale, so you see all the display on the beach, that is amazing. Then when we finish, everyone goes home, I go to the TV, and I watch <laughs> all these all these things that I have taped. And now I can tape a few things before it wasn't. So my mom will, will tape one in her house, my sister mm -hmm. will tape one in their house, and I'll go the following day and, and watch it. But normally I call my mom when I'm watching together at middle of the night, the one from, from uh, DC and the music and inspiring and the things and America the beautiful and things. For me, it's uh, yeah, it's an, it's an amazing thing. Very good. Now you kind of were mentioning this when we were talking about the holiday, but so I got to put you on the spot here. What is your favorite type of cuisine? Oh, well, <laughs> I have to tell you. Um, it, it has it has changed uh, in the last uh, few years. First, it was French, right? Right. Uh, uh, but then, you know, I, I got to know the, for me, French and Italian. Italian is something that I love, man. I love Italian. I'm going to Italy to 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 take classes. Uh, I, I just love the, the Italian thing. And then French was my first love for food. But then I discovered Spanish food. And uh, for me, right now, I tell you, if you I love my, Spanish food. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at my Facebook thing, it's, uh, it's a lot about the Spanish, the ham. I can live in two things, which is ham and bread and wine. But that is Spanish ham is uh, it's an amazing thing. And I keep telling my wife, in his, in Spain, by the way, has a, uh, the people uh, has the longer so, uh, um, life expectancy, right? So uh, and they eat a lot of ham and they have everything with oil, olive oil, and they so that must be good for you. That's what I tell my children. <laughs> so yeah, oh, so yeah. Spanish right now, that's for sure. Yeah, but I, yeah. I I love all type of food. I mean, I fell in love with one time when I started going to Russia, selling cigar. I fell in love with Russian food and the culture and and things like that. So I'm a sucker for for other other um uh, cultures right I, I really enjoy it red square in vegas uh 
in the Mandalay Bay has a, gr a great Russian restaurant. I did not know there was a Red Square. It's called Red Square. Uh, it's there's actually I know there's one in Atlantic City too, but the Red Square is at the Mandalay Bay. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Yeah, it's called well, Red Square. It's got they got an Red... ice bar and everything there. It's 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 a wonderful place. I've been on the Red Square in Moscow when the 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 snow is coming. I because you know they used to do like two cigar like big smoke uh, in uh, in um, in Moscow, and one was in February and one it was June. So I was never able to go in June because the IPCPR was very close to it. And so I normally went in February. I've been four or five times. And uh, let me tell you, very cold, very thin, but it's nothing like being on Red Square. I actually wrote a song, right? Uh, Moscow Nights. Uh, one of these days, I'll, I'll send it to you. Uh, Moscow yeah. Nights. Uh, uh, because I was there, the, 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 the snow, the, the, the lights, the, the, the trembling things, the church. Uh, the, the the whole music came to me and um, it's it's just unique uh, unique so I, I will look next time I'm there because I love Russian food I actually I tr I took a lot of classes it's eh? excuse me can you please tell me how I can find so and so street I tried to learn because I got lost in Russia and with Billy Perdomo next Perdomo's brother we <laughs> went there we land in in St. Petersburg we were supposed to land in Moscow, but it was a big storm. So we were going there. We landed in um, in the, from London. We landed in uh, in St. Petersburg, and we uh, we had to give a talk the following day. We took a train, a train, uh, it, which is like a, a eight or nine, twelve, nine to twelve hours train in the middle of snowstorm, getting to Moscow. We we lost the phone number of the people uh and it was just a, it was just very difficult so uh, but a lot of fun a lot of fun that's awesome all right a couple more here your favorite spectator sport to watch oh. well it's uh it's soccer uh um yeah it's soccer it's uh, for a long time it looked like very you know uh for me i, I couldn't see watching tv i thought it was very boring right and um and um, I will watch on TV football. For me, it was very, very great uh, watching on TV the American football. But then um, I started going to the stadium on, on, on American football, and uh, um, there are a lot of stopping, a lot of things, and uh, I enjoy it. It's, it's, but uh, when I went to the stadium for the first time to see uh, soccer, um, let me tell you, I fell in love because so much going on, the, the energy, and um, so right now, yeah, that that soccer is. Uh, it's, so I follow the European leagues and and some of the American leagues, but I follow I follow the European, especially Spanish one. Real Madrid is my team, and it's just uh, something that I I really enjoy. Very good. All right, now you travel a lot. What I country do. have you not visited that you want to go visit? Uh, well, funny because I was talking today to my wife a lot of that because she keeps insisting, where are we going? So we normally take three, three, uh, three to four trips yeah. outside the United States for vacation a year. And um, um, I always want to go to the same place. And she said, no, you know, I always want to go to Italy. I always want to go to Spain. And, you know, it's, it's crazy. So, um, so uh, we were just talking, talking about that. We, we've been to a couple of countries in Africa. But one that we really have enjoyed, we've been to, to a lot of different places, uh, but one that I took, one that I would like to visit again, that I, that it was a long time, is Tahiti. We were talking about that today. Oh, wow. Uh, we went for our honeymoon, um, um, 20, I should know this, but it's not, I should know this, 20, uh, 21, 22 years ago, we went to, <laughs> to, to our honeymoon in Tahiti, and, uh, and that, that was... Uh, that created a special moment. It was just very nice. So I would like to go there. We're just talking about that today. And then a place that we have in South Africa. I would love to be able to go to South Africa. Uh, we were going to go last year, but there was a big drought. And then we ended up going to Australia, and uh, which we had a fun, but you know, I still have that. So, um, so uh, South Africa, the, the, there's a place there near with uh, the... Uh, um, the Victoria Falls that we want to visit, and uh, and then there's so much great wine. I hear my sister have been several times, and and to say the wines are amazing. So we we definitely want to do that. 
I've heard Aaron won't like this, right? Because he's not a seafood guy, but I heard the South African lobster is fantastic. It is. And I eat yeah. a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It is a different flavor. I haven't had it. I haven't had it. Yeah. I've always had the main. Had different flavor and it's a little sweetener, uh, smaller, and it's just fantastic. As a matter of fact, one of the first time that I had it, so it's a restaurant in South Beach, um, um, Sacra or something like that. Um, I don't remember the actual name right now. Uh, but it was funny because when you enter that restaurant, it's, it's like a grass, like a grass, uh, actually inside the restaurant is grass uh, and then um, um, and then the first time I had it was uh, fr uh, was uh, the, the South African lobster tail with the espresso lobster uh, espresso coffee uh, sauce uh, <laughs> it was uh, what it I mean you know I uh, by the way I, I I took my wife when we were dating there and what an impressive I do amazing uh, impression. Yeah, so the South African uh, lobster, amazing. Uh, that's awesome. So, last question on this segment. Um, you mentioned some of the places you went. You took a very interesting trip that kind of, and I think it was about a, it may have been a year ago, two years ago. You went to the Galapagos Islands, right? Well, actually, it's, yeah, last year, October. Last year. Okay, yeah. What was that like? <laughs> well, let me tell you, we I was amazing because my wife had been telling me uh, that we should go there for a long time. And, um, and uh, we, you know, I really, I, I've been to, to, to Kenya, to the safaris. I've been to all right. these places. I, but, you know, it's, uh, I'm more of a city type of person and the big cities type of thing. And so my wife had been telling me, and last year we said, no, we're not going to have normally in October, 14 is my birthday, 7 is her birthday. Normally we take a vacation at that time. And uh, we, we, because we had a lot of work, we, I said, no, we cannot travel now. And, uh, and then the things open up. And in one week, I told my wife, listen, we're going to the Galapagos. And she was uh, outstanding. But the one thing that I wanted to go there is because, and it came very, it came very, uh, very handy these days, uh, is because I believe, right, that um, in that saying that, you know, it's not the strongest or, or, the, or, or the most intelligent that, uh, that, that will survive, but the species that can adapt, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and can progress and can do that. And, and, and I was in a moment last year, things were happening with the preparing for the cell and preparing for all the things that we were doing. And I said, you know, I think this is timely, so let's go there. Let me tell you, it, it was an amazing thing, right? Uh, I don't want my wife to hear this because then she said, you see, I was right. I will tell you. <laughs> um, but it was an amazing thing because uh, I, 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 I met this fantastic friend of mine now that I told you he's been getting me into the tequilas there and that. The, I, I met a chef. <laughs> it's a, we, uh, we have an amazing relationship now. And, um, and seeing all these uh, animals in the in their habitat and how they have to adapt uh, for me was a, an amazing experience because it's about life and i think this moment right this moment is it's uh, that we're going not only in the country as a whole but with the covid and everything um it is uh, it is it, it, i learned there which is you need to adapt right so you need to adapt to the circumstances. And my life has been like adapting. I came from Cuba. I came with, you know, music, healthcare, now cigars. It's all about adapting and reinventing yourself. You, you know, we talk about the Oliveros Day and about this and that. Right. Everything is about adapting and, and, and re, remake yourself. And uh, for, so to see those animals with so many things and that was, uh, uh, that was an amazing experience. I, I, I tell you, um, it's uh, something that I I, uh, I recommend everybody to do once in their lifetime. Um, of course, when we left there, um, uh, the country um, was in in turmoil, and there was like a little civil war there. Yeah, the yeah, I was asking about that. Yeah, it, it was Ecuador was doing terrible, and we you know we we went through a lot of things. But my experience in Nicaragua, Dominican, and Honduras helped me tremendously. <laughs> and uh, I was able to leave the country and some of my friends were there for a week or so. Uh, but, uh, you know, I did, 
prepare it. But again, it's about the the the, the evolving and, and adjusting to the circumstances. And uh, uh, for that, to see those animals, I think uh, I took so many pictures, man. Uh, uh, these animals, beauty, um, it's, it's just timely, you know, these, uh, these turtles, 100 years old. Yeah. I mean, give me a yeah. break. Uh, you know, it's things like that. It's amazing. Very good, Raphael. Raphael, um, we did keep you a while. We're gonna, Aaron and I are going to do one more segment. You're welcome to stay, but if you need to go, we're going to talk about uh, the announcement with PCA, to, to what happened with the furloughs. But if you need to go. I will, I will join you guys. I will stay, yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm just going to. about that. All right, so I'm going to do the last round of uh, sponsors, and then we'll get into that segment, um, which will be the last segment. Uh, of course, I want to mention uh, Dumbarton Tobacco and Trust. With Dumbarton Tobacco and Trust, Master Blender Steve Saka set up to create Purosome Compromiso, Cigars Without Compromise. This represents an expression of Saka's closely held values and attests in three simple words everything Saka wants to accomplish. Cigars are more than a passion of Saka. They are a way of life. As for the brands of Dumbarton Tobacco and Trust, Sobra Mesa, Mi Carita, Umbagog, Moisture de Saka, Todos Los Dias, and Sin Compromiso with your local tobacconists. And by La Aurora Cigars, in the heart of Santiago, Dominican Republic, on the rolling floor at the La Aurora Cigar Factory is a section reserved only for the elite, the best of the best. These elite cigar rollers work for over 10 years simply to get the opportunity to make a historic cigar. Those cigars are the La Aurora Preferitos. Featuring six different wrappers in a beautifully packaged Perfecto shape, La Aurora Preferitos have been the preferred cigar of the Leon family for over 115 years. Take part in a legendary tradition that started the Dominican cigar industry. Look to the lion, La Aurora Cigars. We are Dominican defined. And by J.C. Newman Cigar Company. Founded in 1895 by Julius Caesar Newman, J.C. Newman Cigar Fa Company is the oldest family-owned cigar maker in America. For four generations and 125 years, J.C. Newman has been handcrafting many of the world's finest cigars. J.C. Newman is headquartered in an iconic 109-year-old-plus cigar factory in the Ybor City National Historic Landmark District of Tampa, Florida. At this factory known as Elbury Hole, J.C. Newman rolls premium cigars by hand and hand-operated antique cigar machines. The J.C. Newman Pensa Factory is the second largest in Nicaragua in its way. Brickhouse, Perla de Mar, El Baton, and quorum cigars are hand rolled. J.C. Newman's Diamond Crown, Maximus, Julius Caesar, and Black Diamond cigars are handmade by Tobacco Lair A. Fuente in the Dominican Republic. With its longtime partners, the Arturo Fuente family, the Newmans have founded the Cigar Family Charitable Foundation, which supports low income families in the Dominican Republic with education, healthcare, vocational training, and clean water. Visit jcnewman.com to learn more. And by Casa Cuevas Cigars, the Cuevas family has four generations of experience in cigar making. For many years, they have manufactured cigars for industry leaders at a Las Lavas factory in the Dominican Republic. Now, the Cuevas family has brought their very own brand to market with Casa Cuevas Cigars. Try the Casa Cuevas Connecticut, the Casa Cuevas Habano, the Casa Cuevas Maduro, and La Mandaria, as well as the Cuevas Reserva line. If they don't carry it, be sure to ask your local retailer for Casa Cuevas Cigars. Casa Cuevas Cigars from our casa to yours. And finally, by Cigar Marketplace. Cigar Marketplace is the first B2B premium cigar and accessories online broker that connects premium suppliers to retailers, simplifying the way our industry does business. Retailers can now directly order from the suppliers they want without the wait, getting customers the brands they demand. Wholesalers no longer need to depend on going store to store to find the retailer that fits their brand. This allows retailers to enjoy a one-stop shopping experience for all their store needs. With an optional monthly subscription of $39.99, this allows members to benefit from all order free shipping. 40% off second day air rates, a 2.5% cash back every six months, refer a friend program, set discount of 10% naked bundles, and exclusive weekly deals and more. Now members can also take advantage of Cigar Marketplace's deals with free shipping on orders over $750. Visit www.cigarmarketplace.co to learn more. And I just want to mention one more time for folks who may have tuned in late, um, get in on the JC, uh, the Romeo y Julieta uh, giveaway here. Travel Humidor, Torch Lighter. Uh, comment in on the show on the Cigar Coop page, uh, the, the broadcast, with your first Romeo y Julieta cigar you smoked. Hashtag it, RYJ1875. I'll be picking that winner tomorrow. Um, so folks tuned in late or catching it on replay, they can get that. But it has to be on where this stream is going right now. All right. Um, last segment here um, is the news that came out today um, on the uh, – actually, not today, yesterday. Um, the furloughs that have gone on um, at the um, – at, at PCA. Um, and I guess I'll start it off, Aaron. Um, we kind of found out about this, yes, like around lunchtime. Um, and 
I was satisfied with the communications we got this time from the PCA on this. Yeah, um, I agree with that. Yeah, I, I, I think there was some media members who were left off. It may have been the only problem. But they, for the most part, I was, I was satisfied that they, they promptly got us on there and uh, we were able to, um, to get the information and get access very quickly to Scott, Scott Pierce. Yeah, and I think they notified the retailers and the exhibitors first, right? Yep. And then let us know that they were going to do a media call so that we could kind of discuss it with them, ask questions and things like that. So I think yep. that was pretty good. I think, I think it was pretty good too. Um, you know, I'll comment on this. Um, this was a very hard – this was, I think, very hard for Scott to do this um, because Scott was actually one of the guys who was furloughed on, on this whole mm -hmm. thing. Which, were you aware of that when the call started? Because I asked the question. I know I asked the question. I don't know if I missed it or not that he was one of the guys furloughed. I didn't realize that until I asked him that question point blank. Yeah, when he said all staff, I, I assumed that it meant him as well. I was surprised there wasn't a board member on there. I really was. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you know, because again, he was kind of having to deliver this message. I would have liked to have had an opportunity to ask board members certain questions on, on there too. So that was sure. the part that, and, and like I said, I give him a lot of credit for, he did not have to do that for anybody, uh, yeah. considering, you know, that they just basically told him, you know, Hey, you're furloughed for a period of time there. Yeah. So, you know, the reasons we heard were, were COVID based, mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on that in terms of was it, do you think this was a cost cutting mode directly related to COVID? Um, I could definitely see that. I mean, without having the trade show, you're having a reduced income um, for the year. But, um, you know, I would think that the, um, the funding that they currently have would be able to maintain them through the year. Um, so I'm, I kind of question that a little bit. Um, I think we're really determined on what the length of the furlough is to see if it's a cost cutting move or not. I mean, based on what Scott was saying, you know, he's thinking it's a short term thing. Um, if it's just a few weeks, I don't see how that's really a big cost cutting. That's kind of where I was going with that. If, if you kind of calculate salaries, which you can kind of maybe estimate what it is, right. Even if you yeah. go on a high end, I don't see how much they're saving here with a short term furlough um, with this. That's kind of where I'm like, that's a question I would have had maybe for a board member Right. on that um you know and again we didn't have a lot of time to prep for that call either so things were going on the fly I, you know i was kind of as that thing was going on i was kind of trying to pull some questions together and think yeah. i had more afterwards and th those are some of the questions i had in, in relation to that because it was a uh it was a surprise to me um that you know but now they now there essentially is there the pca is not operational at least from a normal standpoint i don't want to say right. they're you know the board is stepping in and they're going to be taking on certain responsibilities in the short term but but it led a lot of questions like like you know like you know obviously this thing going on with you know they're saying there's a trade show next year that was one of the things they said there was start there was an email that went out last week saying people had to go validate their booze again and now suddenly the staff's going to be gone as of the 15th it's the staff sounds like they're still working another week at least right. So that part was a little puzzling to me as well on that. Did they mention, did they mention they call Will and Aaron? Did they mention the people or small or manufacturers that have put money down for the booth? What happened with that? Um, was that an answer? Was that a, something that they addressed or not? They had addressed that. They sent out an email last, the end of last week saying that, if you had a deposit, it was rolling over to next year. Got it. Um, there was some, I don't know the answer if you're not going to the show next year, if they refund your money. That I don't know. Um, I, I had seen one report say yes, but there was nothing in that email saying if you don't renew, um, they're not refunding your money. I mean, that's a normal thing from what I understand with trade shows and these types of things where if, if something is canceled, they typically do roll the money over. Um, as opposed to issuing, uh, you know, refunding everyone and having them reapply again. The other thing that they said, Raphael, in terms of that, was that the trade show floor layout was going to be basically the same. So you were going to have the same – the 2021 layout was going to be what the 2020 layout at least was. 
Right. That seems big, right? Yeah, that that is yeah, that is big. So my question, Aaron, to you, what do you think this means short term and long term right now over to both of you? What do you I mean, this is a pretty significant announcement, I think, that happened. Yeah, I mean, if um, I, I think it depends on how much planning is necessary now to get ready for the trade show for next year. Because I know that's a big bulk of the work. So if they're kind of if they don't really have anything to do in regards to the trade show, since it's still pushed out another you know another year, um, in the short term it might not really mean that much. Um, but in the long term, um, you know, it's another hit for the organization. Um, you know, they just keep taking taking the hits. I mean, uh, the reason we're canceling the trade show this year, you know, wasn't under their control. It was, it right. was going to happen regardless. So you can't really right. Right. put that necessarily on them. But um, if they're able to just kind of roll all the plans that they had for this year into next year, there's a lot less, less planning that needs to happen now to kind of regenerate all that work for another trade show. Um, so I think in the long term. Um, there's going to be a lot of questions in regards to, you know, how the board came to this decision, see how long the furloughs are for. Uh, if it's a short term, you know, it wasn't really that much of a cost cutting move. So what was the reason for doing it? Um, so I'm just wondering if it's going to drive more people to ask questions, especially of the board. Um, Cause I know that's where a lot of the you know, discontent is, is around, around how the board is kind of managing things um, and whether the staff actually can do what they need to do without kind of being handcuffed a bit by what the board's choosing to do. Um, so I'm hoping that what comes from this is that um, those questions are asked, uh, the board has to answer them or, you know, become a bit more responsible for that. Um, and people will get more of a voice. Uh, maybe they can shake up the board a bit. Um, I'm not sure, you know, how many seats were planned to be changing this year. Um, to see if maybe some they change what the structure of that looks like, uh, so that maybe more of the retailers, more of the manufacturers get a, a chance to kind of be part of that group. Yep. Uh, Christine Morgan, who is the person who is in charge of all this, has some comments here. I'm going to read them. Uh, balances are transferred to 2021 and booth rates are locked in. Uh, the floor plan will remain the same and people will have the opportunity uh, to move should they want to. And it takes about 14 months to plan the show. There's a lot of work that needs to happen in the months moving forward. So that's a big, that last comment she made is a very telling thing. We're, we're in that 14, we're well into that 14 month yeah. window of the planning already. Um, so concern of mine that, you know, that, that this is happening on top of, I think there's a whole piece with the SE piece coming in. And I think they were doing a lot of work to prepare retailers and members to kind of give them guidance to navigating through this, this SE world. Mm -hmm. And what that means. So I think this is a, they picked a very interesting time to do this. I get, I get it's summer and all that, but it isn't like there's things that aren't going on either. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah, so we'll see. I mean, uh, how long it runs. Yeah. Ra Raphael, let me, let me ask you a question. We haven't had a talk, a chance to talk to you um, since the, uh, you know, since things have changed, obviously with Altidus right now. Um, what is Altidus? I mean, what, what is Altidus looking at for 2021? Is there a chance that you guys would return to the show? Um, or you well, guys... There, there, no, there has been no decision about that, right? Okay. Um, so our company made very clear that we were just not attending the 2020. And, uh, and um, you know, so if the circumstances changes and, and things changes, I'm sure the company will look at, uh, at different ways, right, to do it. Because we, you know, we're dedicated to the retailers. That's that's not the yes. issue, right? So, but you know, circumstances have to change. Uh, but this is definitely a difficult position. I mean, for these employees, but they work very hard. Sure. They have tremendous. Uh, they have the tremendous dedication, right? And especially, you know, Scott just came in into the the middle of all this. It's, it's, it's very. I mean, you have to feel very bad for this guy, right? Uh, which is uh, very approachable and. You know, uh, things like that. Uh, yeah, but in in our case, it's uh, you know we will we'll make the decision when that comes uh, 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 when that decision has to be made, and then we'll see. You right? Yep, yep. I mean the um, they've been. I mean, look, PCA they have a tough job. They they take it on the chin a lot. Um, it isn't easy 
to kind of keep this whole membership base happy. I mean, they've been, for the most part, I think, yeah, there's been, Aaron and I have talked about some of the communication pitfalls, right? In the end, I've still had very good access to everyone on that staff that, that I've asked for. You know, mainly you know, if, I, if it's Scott or Christine, you know, and the two I probably know the best. Um, I, I've always gotten answers and things like that and responsiveness. So I, I'm okay, you know, I, I – I get things aren't perfect sometimes. And yeah, we complained, I think how the um, cancellation thing went out, but in general, I still see a responsiveness on this from them. Yeah. Well, but uh, you know, to me, it's like, uh, we were discussing about the trip to the Galapagos, right? And everything goes to uh, time changes and, and you have to evolve and you have to adapt. Yeah. The, the, the answer is always adapt, right? So trade shows in general have been having a tough time in the, uh, in recent time, right? Um, yeah. So a, a definition of what you do and how you do it, and it has to make uh, for our companies and for everybody it has to make financial. Um, uh, you know, at the end, uh, you know, we all love to get together, right, and enjoy ourselves and the camaraderie, and the, you know, it's a celebration and all those things. But at the end, uh, we do have responsibility uh, uh, to to manage the business as a business, right? Uh, right. It has to make sense that it has to be so the only way i see it is uh evolving and changing and adapting and uh going back to the galapagos uh, trip so it's all part of uh, uh the evolution of life and business and times that do change and i think um, organizations just like our company like your business like any other business um has to evolve yeah and, and that's what it has to happen there's no doubt about it uh, i i agree Aaron, I'll, I won't put Raphael on the spot with this question if he wants, but but I'll ask I'll ask Aaron this one though. Uh, Aaron, do you think there's a trade show next year? Um, I think it's iffy. Um, I think it's probably iffy that TPE happens just because of you know how the COVID things are still happening. Right. Um, I'm not sure. I know you're very very confident that it's happening. I think it's has happening. That cha- has that changed now? No. Um, okay. I, I, I think this board will find a way to put this show on. Okay. Um, I don't think they, I mean, I'm, cause I'm looking at the reality of the revenue situation. If they're going to survive, they can't have two trade shows in a row miss. So unless it's, yeah. unless COVID is just going to be a nightmare into 2021, I can't see, I can't see it being canceled. I mean, right. I think they have to, so now they're going to have challenges. Like, like if Christine's saying it's a 14 month window we're already into two months of that window. There's concern. Um, and, and there'll be, you know, especially if the staff who's been doing this for a while, isn't involved. What, what that, you know, if I'm hoping they'll be more involved as soon as possible and back to work on this would be, would right. be my feeling. It's going to be tough on them, you know, cause they lost, you know, I'm sure there's project schedules that they have on this and, and all that. So, yeah, but I'm still confident that I think they go forward with the show. Uh, cause I don't think, they have if they don't have that revenue come in next year, it, that that's a that's that's a big problem. Right. What's your estimate on how long you think the furloughs last? They didn't say anything, right? They didn't give it time. No, no. I I asked the question of, to Scott on um, will we see them back before Labor Day? And he, he was kind of hoping that that would be the case. And I think he'd be very. Con- it sounded like he would be concerned if um if it's not the case. I mean, if they're not back at work at Labor Day, it is going to be a big problem. And I don't know. I really don't have a comp. I mean, I don't understand what the board's contingency plan is going to be for operating the next, you know, few weeks. I mean, you you know, again, I, I, I question what they're saving here. You know, they, are they going to bite themselves long term by not having the, the staff there who, you know, who works very hard? Um, so I'm, like I said, but I'm going to still put my money on as a trade show next year. I'm going to, I'm going to keep my, unless COVID, COVID changes the game. Then if, you know, COVID could change the game. I'm hoping that that's not the case. Yeah. Rafi, I got one more question for you on all this. This one is for you. Um, you know, I, I see a lot of things, right. On social media more. And it's always that the big four right is is in favor of regulation right 
and to be honest with you, I haven't seen, I, I, I go back and I'm like, I haven't seen any evidence of this, right? I, and I keep saying, if someone says that, to present me with some evidence. And I go back to the comments that Altidus submitted last summer. Right. That were very clear that you had were very clear your stance on SE. Absolutely. So, so I want to kind of give you the floor to this, whatever you can say on that, because I haven't, I've asked for people to demonstrate that to me who have been the critics, and I haven't been able to get an answer, okay, other than they just believe that. Well, you know, and that's uh, that is uh, a, a complete misunderstanding or mis, uh, um, or a myth, right? That the big companies, and I cannot speak for any of the other big companies. I like right. I can speak for our company, um, um, Javier, which is the chairman of the of the CAA, Cigar Association of America, has been tremendously dedicated. He's been the chairman for five, four years, I think. Right. Here is the, the the longest one the chairmanship of uh, uh, well the history of the organization right. uh, has been dedicated uh, and uh, to to the premium cigar industry. And ask me, as I, I can tell you for myself, because when I, I served on the, on the IPCPR on the advisory board at first, the first one that they, they created, I, 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 they asked me to participate. And um, the same thing that I feel is what Alta is feel, which is, listen, we believe that it shouldn't be any, any regulations on the premium cigars. But if you're gonna regulate us, you better regulate us as premium cigars and not like cigarette or other products, right? So what people misunderstand, I think, is that uh, we are right now under regulations. Yes, we, that, that's important to know, yes. You know, so people listen that, you know, we're fighting, we lost that part, we fought very hard, and we continue to fight, to, to fight that part. But in the meantime, we are being regulated. So if we are being regulated, I think we have a, a duty to tell, uh, to show them, to educate the regulators why you shouldn't regulate me like you do to the other, to the other right. tobacco products. And that I think is a, is a responsibility that all companies have. And it's very easy to say, well, you know, you know, a family uh, companies and we're not family things and we're, listen, we have a lot of families in our business, you know. Uh, for anyone that knows me, my family is my business, and um, and and all our employees are families. We we use a family business with a lot more families than some other business. Um, we we believe that we that if we're going to be regulated, uh, it has to be a a, a a regulation that address our uh, unique needs of our industry. And, and I think, uh, and that's what the misunderstanding is. No, we don't believe in that. But if you are regulating me, uh, there's nothing bad by talking to the regulators and showing them why this cigar is, uh, is, uh, is different and, why, and what goes into making the cigar. Our company have dedicated a lot of money and a lot of resources and a lot of time. Personally, I don't have part of this company um, uh, to show the Congress to show the politician to go that to show the administration why and the regulators why our products are different, right? And um, yeah, so that's something that I feel extremely difficult. Even when talking to our, our fellow some fellow uh, people in the industry that says, "No, you want regulations? It's of what? You know, it's it's easy and uh, it's it's easy to say, right? So you blame the big companies because of uh, being regulated, right? That, right." Uh, no, we, we don't. We don't want. And listen, every single thing that we have put, either the CAA or Alta, this on their own, uh, the, the position that we have, whenever they have asked for information, we have been very clear right. we think that our products shouldn't be regulated. And but again, if you regulate me, let me tell you that what you're doing is not correct. Let me show you why this this, this product is different, right? Um, the craftsmanship, the different, the different, and um, the changes uh, of tobaccos and things like that. So that's uh, something I, I feel very bad, right? So uh, that uh, people have said that, and uh, and some people do believe it, right? And it's it's there's never, never one. That's in me. That's in me. 
And the second is that we don't we don't spend any money on saving the industry, you know. And and I say, you think a big company is not going to spend money to save their industry, and other small company does spend more? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, we, you know, uh, we do, we do, and we um, we spend a lot of money in regulation. Uh, re uh, trying to fight this regulation a lot more but a lot more yeah, according to the size that we are and that's that should be right. the way right but th those two things are very difficult that we don't fight the regulations and uh, we are against uh, we are in favor of regulations nothing can be further from the truth and then um and then and listen before this well because you have mass market companies and, well we are a premium company we always been we always been a premium division. Now we are. A now you're premium. going to be. That's going to be the focus and core competency. Yeah. Yeah. But even within that, um, you know, I can tell you how yet has fought extremely. I cannot tell you how many times we have met uh, with uh, with the Congress and in the key people and tell our story of what the cigar shouldn't be regulated. But if you're going to regulate me, let's regulate in a way that makes sense. Not only for us as a big company, for everybody, because the cigars are very unique. Very good. All right, um, I think we've uh, Rafael. I know we kept you very late. Um, hopefully, you got some you got the smoke, which is good. I got uh, to smoke. I got to drink, and I'm uh, and I am uh, not working tomorrow, so that's when. Yeah. No, that's good. Definitely, uh, unless you're going to be tasting blends tomorrow, then that's work. Right? Well, no, no, that's <laughs> always, that's always, uh, that's, yeah. you know, we work 24 hours on that, but then. Uh, and, uh, yeah, no, but, uh, no, Raphael, we, we do want to very much, thank you very much, uh, taking the time as always. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Yep. Um, and um, I, I, I know I'll see you soon. We will hopefully. see you soon, hopefully here in Florida soon, Will. And Aaron, thank you very much. It's always great to be with you guys. Listen, uh, cigars are my passion, but I know it's your passion. And we have made uh, our life uh, uh, work to, to do it in different ways. You do it and taking a fantastic education to the people, the consumers and retailers that a lot of retailers listen to these things. And, uh, and we have make it by making cigars. So it's a great combination. And, uh, and uh, in addition, we, we, we have fun uh, doing this. So thank right. you very much. Thank you. We appreciate it, Raphael. Uh, mentioned next week, uh, primetime episode 146. Uh, Glenn Case makes his debut on the show from Christoph Cigars. You're not going to want to miss that. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, you still have a chance to get in on the uh, RYJ giveaway. Um, but anyway, that's going to wrap up primetime episode 145 into the annals of history for Thursday, July 2nd. Now, Friday, July 3rd on the East Coast. Uh, happy Independence Day to everybody. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see everybody next week. See you guys. Thank you, guys. See you. Cheers. Take care.